closer than you think. It's not a tournament. It's what you don't see on TV. The cash is real. The stakes are high. They bet big. They win big. They lose big. High stakes live action poker. Live at the bike. Watch it live on the web. Or play it if you dare. At the Bicycle Casino right here in Los Angeles. Hello everyone and welcome to Live at the Bike, brought to you by the Bicycle Casino in Los Angeles, California, the first and only webcast of real action cash game poker. My name is Bart Hansen and I'm joined by the poker babe, Shirley Rosario, and you have me in a little bit of a congested form. Mm -hmm. I know you missed me last night, Shirley. Oh yeah, and I had a always. <laughs> How was it working with Dave? It was great. Yeah, it was great. Fun. You guys have uh, only worked you know, with each other a few times, Yeah, right? I think that was our third time working together. Well, we've uh, got limit holding tonight. Now, normally we try to do that on Mondays, but we'll try to do it. Well, we're going to do it today. Mm -hmm. so it's usually either Mondays or Tuesdays. And we've got an 8-16 game, so it's one of those four eight chip structured games, which mm -hmm. makes it very, very exciting because there's a lot of chips that go into the pot. Right. So without further ado, let's get to it. And we will get to the table, and let's go around and introduce the players. Okay, in seat number one, we have Douglas. In seat two, we have George. Seat three, we have Alan. Seat four is Aaron. Seat five is Kevin. I think that's Ryan in seat six. And Mike in seat seven. Blake in seat eight. And Paul rounding out the table in seat nine. Oh, that's interesting that Paul is in there. I play with Paul in stud high low. Mm -hmm. Didn't know he actually played limit hold'em. No. He wants to play on live at the bank. Oh. So we're going to get into the first hand here. And those green chips are $2 chips. The blue chips are $1 chips. It looks like we can see that uh, Douglas in seat one is made a straight. Looks like he's stuck around with the ten of spades on the turn. And Mike is going to raise him because he's made kings up on the river. Seat seven raises at the end. But Douglas has got this, the, uh, the straight there. And uh, I guess he couldn't three bet there. There's three spades on the board. And I knew what I said when I, when I raised you. If you weren't going anywhere, you were, you were staying there. Douglas is going to take that, that it down. Wasn't get Thank, you. Thank you. I think these guys might, might be, all of them might be new players to the show. I don't know if I recognize well, anybody. No, C2's played on this game before. <laughs> and that's what we're getting word that only C2 is. Only C2, been, okay. He's played on here. You're familiar with him, right? Uh, no. I don't know. Not sure. I'm getting word that he's been playing here for many, many years. They have a couple buddies in town that might be playing on the show, but they, uh, they're going to be playing in the tournament tonight, the whole, whole Hold'em tournament. So if they get busted out early. Well, hopefully we won't see him on the table then. Yep. Tonight on the whole whole hold'em is a two hundred dollar no limit. Right. And uh, you still have an hour to get down here and sign up. It starts at seven fifteen during the week, four fifteen on the weekends. Now seat four looks like he limped in. He's gonna have to show us his cards. Seat five is in there, pocket deuces. And seat number seven, that's Mike. He's gonna raise it up with pocket sevens. Seat four's got a little suited connector, nine ten of hearts. So pocket sevens, pocket deuces, and nine ten of hearts. So seat seven, the razor with pocket sevens. The flop comes jack, five six, not a bad flop for pocket sevens, one over card. He's gonna bet. Aram's gonna fold here with a nine ten, and I don't really know what Kevin's calling for here. Maybe he thinks his hand is good. Turns a four. Now he has a draw. It's He's off suit three. No, if he hits off suit three, Mike has a higher straight. Yeah, and he's got a club draw too, but again, Mike has Mike a seven has a of better, clubs. Yeah, the only thing that's going to help him is a two. So a check call here again. And the river is an eight. And this is probably going to go check, check here, I don't know. I would imagine me, Mike's no, going to bet. Yeah, yeah Mike made a straight. straight at the end. Sorry. He did check to him. I yeah, yeah. And uh, pocket deuces finally lays it down at the end. Well, I'm really sorry to say, Bart, but you sound like crap. I got lucky. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do you hear it in my voice? I do. Yeah. I don't sound like crap. Okay, half crap. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. Seat one has got the button. Unbelievable. 
of course, I was, of course, watching the show last night. Uh huh. It's nice to hear me in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> like the sound of your own voice, huh? That's right. Uh -huh. Of course. Looks like pocket aces here for seat two in the small blind. He's going to raise. And seat one on the button. Looks like he limped in and he's called. He's got eight, nine off suit. Jack, eight, king here. Douglas and is going to call C2 there. Seat two bets here. He's, okay. And uh, seat one calls with bottom pair. Turns a seven. And now Douglas could pick up a 10 for a straight here, a bet and a call again. Right, then 8, 9, or 10 will help him. And the river's a 5, no help. And George is going to bet here again. And again, a lot of people will say, well, a limit hold him, it's just one extra bet on the river. Isn't it always profitable to make the call? Because, you know, if he's bluffing, say, one out of 10 times, isn't that correct? Well, if you look at that board, I mean, what does your 8-9 beat there? The guy raised yeah, well, out of the line. Yeah, well, I mean, line. if you fold it on the flop, it just avoid that whole problem. That's true. Absolutely. It's interesting, you know, small stakes hold them as a different, obviously you play a different strategy. If the table is loose passive, meaning like if there are a lot of limping, a lot, a lot of limping in here, hands like 9-10 suited, 8-9 suited, I might actually limp in early position with those hands if I know that there's five or six way action every single time without a raise. But in normal limit games, those hands have very little value for most Yeah, as much as I love suited connectors and no limit, I don't really yeah. play them here. Now seat eight has raised here with ace six of diamonds and the blind is called with seven eight of spades. And uh, this ace six, yeah. not ace nine, yeah, and he has, he has two pair here. Top and bottom. Ace, queen, six on the flop, and he bets, and he's going to take it down. Of course, if you want to follow a live thread that started on the Internet, you can go to 2plus2.com, spelled out. Click on forums, and we're over in Texas Hold'em, small stakes Hold'em section tonight. Official Live the Bike thread for November 29th, 816 limit. You can also email us at live at the bike .com. button is going to move over here to seat three. I guess seat three is a Canadian. It says he's from Toronto. That's uh, Alan. Now Blake is going to raise here from seat eight. He's got ace six offsuit. And here we go. Now seat five is going to make this call in the big blind. I guess with any two cards because he's got jack five offsuit. Yeah. King three king here. Hey, dude, it gets raised, man. And look at this. Kevin bet here and Blake raised. Well, if you're going to try to make the move, okay, but why would you call the raise with Jack five? Turn is an ace. Nice to hit a and I think he's going to bet again. He is. And I think that Blake just called this time. So I don't know what Jack Five is looking for here. The river's a king. And let's see here. Kevin's going to check, and you would imagine that A6 is going to bet, and he does. And Kevin folds. Well, like I said, I mean, okay, maybe take a shot at it on the flop, but you're going to get raised there. Why call? What are you trying to hit there? And then once the turn comes out, boy, well, you're in big trouble. Right. Go home tonight at 10 o'clock. Now, of course, new developments at Live the Bike. We replay every show here from the previous day. Um, immediately after we conclude, all the way up until 4 o'clock in the afternoon the next day. So if you ever want to come and play on the show, you can come and you don't have to wait for the archives any right. longer. You can just, just go, go back right and home. watch it at night. Now, I, I assume that it is a continuous loop. It's not when you go back home, you don't start at the beginning, right? It's a continuous loop, so it's... Uh, you know, running continuously and everyone jumps in at the same point. Well, this one got folded around in the blinds here and it looks like they're going to chop. 
Well, this seems like a pretty tamed 816 game from what we've seen in the past. So far, I mean, it's only been a few hands, though. Well, yeah. We should explain what chop is. I don't know if some of the people know what chop is, right? We don't know. See that as much in the no limit games, but in the limit games, it's really worth it because the drop is uh, four and one. So rather than a small blind, a big blind playing it out, five dollars going to the drop, just the small blind pays one dollar. Right, in this game, it's actually five and one. Four, four and one. Uh, if you're right, four and one, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're thinking of the other casino that rips right. you off down here. Yeah. But before they actually raised the rake here, the games in the plaza level were three and one. Mm -hmm. And this game was four and one. Right. Yeah, we have a raise here by Mike with 10 four clubs. And Douglas is in there with pocket eights. And look at this, he's hit top pair of Mike with the raise. He's gonna bet. Douglas calls. He's gone this year. Turn is a five. Now Mike has a flush draw to go along with his top pair. And look at this, Mike checked it, and Douglas checked behind him. The river's a queen. Mike checks again. Can you beat a busted flush draw? And Douglas checks behind him and Mike is going to take it down I believe I got a pair of fives with 10-4 I don't know if Mike realizes that he has a pair of tens or what but well the dealer did yeah he, she pushed him in the pot I mean, he said a busted flush draw with a pair of fives he shut know. down on the turn I mean he had a big mm -hmm. hand on the turn I don't know if he was going for a check raise or what but regardless 10-4 clubs takes yeah, it down <laughs> Yeah. Button moves over there to seat six. Yeah, well, she's paying attention. <laughs> Small blind is uh, two chips, big blind is four chips. Looks <laughs> like we got queen jack offsuit here for seat four. Seat two is going to limp in with a king nine of diamonds. Seat four will limp in. Small blind's gonna raise. So this guy is playing real loose aggressive. He's got four or five suited. And we got three way action here. Mike is the raiser out of position here. Seat seven. Here we go to the flop. A six ten. And Mike checks. And everybody checks. They all check. Aram's got an open ended straight draw. The turn's an ace. And everyone checks again. Is it? And, yeah, the, gotcha. and the river is a seven, and you know what? Is king king high is good here. It is. George in C two with king nine is good. And I got a I got a four straight with an almost flush. Well, sometimes I mean, very 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 occasionally. That's a game close. You can raise out of the blinds with a suited connector to build the pot up. I think surely, not necessarily out of small blind. I wouldn't think, but. Uh, and not necessarily that small, four or five of hearts, but at least the guy didn't, I mean, he didn't fire out at it. I guess there's two ways of thinking about that. I mean, if he had fired, he probably would have taken it down. Mm -hmm. But the queen jack would have stuck around. You put a raise in there and an ace comes out. Yeah. It's not a bad bet. No, it's not, but the queen jack would have stuck around, and I don't know if that guy would have kept firing. Mm -hmm. um, so. Look at seat one's limped in here with ace, king of diamonds. Seat six is going to make a raise here. He's got ace ten off suit. And seat seven's going to three bat with four three suited. A little lower this time. Yep. Looks like Paul over there in the big blind. I think he's mocking okay. pocket threes. Yes, he is. And seat one has pulled the limp re raise. He's capped it with ace king diamonds. I'm really not thrilled with limping in this game. Well, maybe he was trying to limp re-raise. Re -raise. No, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, he, he could be. Um, but but they'll call two bets. You know, get your get your value in there. Well, he's hit the flop here. King, Jack, five. And he's going to bet. Ryan, Ryan really, he folds. He's got a gut shot. And now Mike is going to raise with three, four of hearts. And he's drawing to run a runner. Turn is a spade. It's the three of spades. And now Mike has a pair. And Mike is going to check behind Douglas. 
And the river is a queen. And the funny thing is, Shirley, ace I gotta tell you, got to tell you, if I had ace 10 there, I know there was two suits out there, but usually in a raised pot, usually can call one of those small bets for a gut shot. Right. He did have the 10 of spades in his hand. He would have picked up a spade draw on the turn. Not to know that that would have been good, though, but uh, I don't think I would have just folded with the ace-10 on the flop. But he did. Yeah, I went. Yeah. And uh, Douglas takes it down there with ace-king. It's hard to move a guy, though, when he's got the best, you know... We got a big slick and he's, he's a good player. I have to be double. The button's going to move over there and see eight. Slick and then, you know, what can you do? You can't, you know. So it looks like seat seven's a bit of a uh, wild man, huh? Seems like it. I had stuff I could have done. See if he continues to go like that. Let's see if his money lasts for the night where he can continue to do that. Seat five is pocket aces. And three's raising with queen jack. Let's see if seat five's going to make it three bets. No, he just no, calls. he just calls. He just calls. And he might get it heads up anyway. Now the blinds are going to come in. We've got four-way action. A lot of Broadway cards, and aces just played it slow. And the flop comes king, queen, eight. Not really a great flop for pocket aces without the eight, without a heart. Without an ace of hearts. But it looks like his hand is still good, but boy, is he going to have to dodge some cards. Now, Alan's bet here with queen, jack. Let's see if Kevin raises. He just calls. He has the best heart draw. And everybody calls. So here we go to the turn. Turns a jack. And now Aces is behind. Allen's made two pair. Of course, George is in there with ten jack. And Allen's going to continue to bet here with the queen jack. Kevin just calls. Look at this, Douglas is going to call with a pair and, and a straight draw. But if the 10 comes, somebody with an ace will have a hard straight draw, and the river's a king. And look at this. Now Kevin has the best hand Now Kevin again. has the best hand. Allen gets counterfeited. And aces and kings are going to take it down there if Kevin makes the call here on the river. He is going to make the call. And now at this point, none of these other guys should overcall here. Now Douglas is going to fold. George is going to fold. And aces is good. Aces are good. And that pot, I mean, that was a double bet four ways pre-flop. Um, and then it was, you know, a double bet or, or a big bet on the turn four ways. Mm -hmm. And then two big bets. It was about a, oh, about a hundred and fifty to two hundred dollar pot right there. And again, I was wondering what aces was uh, waiting for. Yeah, of course, there's always that, that hand a little different. Well, there's always that big debate. I think it was a Mike yeah, Caro versus uh, Skolansky debate versus thinning the field mm -hmm. versus uh, you know keeping people in, which I guess is Mike Caro's argument. To keep people in? Yeah, to not necessarily thin the field, because aces is the best hand. Why do I want to thin the field? I'm going to be favored no matter what hand going into the flop. Well, you're the favorite amongst each individual hand, but collectively. Yeah, but collectively, you're still going to be the favorite. You might not be 50% favorite, but you're still going to be favorite to win the hand. No, I don't King, think you get what I'm saying. King 7, 10 here, all hearts. I, I'm not defending Mike Harrell, believe me. Mike is bet here. Ace no seven. Way. I actually took one down. And he's gonna take it down. That was my Aces is well, always gonna be a favor like over favorite every other hand. Every other hand, but like I said, collectively, meaning that if you go against three opponents and right. your hand's at thirty percent and oh, another one's a you know, eighteen you and right. then a, whatever, if you put those together, your hand only has thirty percent chance of holding up and they they have sixty percent. Right. But your hand is still it's always still the, right. gonna right. It's still be a the favorite. favorite. Right. But it's just like you said, not necessarily 50% favorite. It's not. But I think what he, what his argument is is, well, if I let all these people in behind me, I'm going to get more money into the pot, and I still have the best chance of winning the pot um, mm -hmm. <laughs> versus of every other hand, because aces is always obviously the best hand uh, pre-flop. Now, seat six is going to raise here with pocket queens. Seat six has pocket ten. Pocket oh, ten. Pocket ten. Seat seven's got the queens. Right. He's going to three bet, it looks like. Yeah, three. 
So he's got a real yeah, hand this you, time. You gotta pump it or dump it. <laughs> An ace nine off suit and limped in, and he's gonna call three bets. Very t difficult spot to be in with the ace nine off suit. Three bets here. Here we go with the flop. Jack nine seven with a couple of hearts. Ryan's gonna bet right in here with ten. Mike, Mike is gonna raise with the overpair. So Ryan's got a gut shot. He could also catch a ten. Did Kevin just call Looks that? Like Kevin, he did yeah, call Kevin that Kevin called with ace nine. He's oh, got backdoor two, two hearts. Two bets with second pair. Turn is a six. Pocket queens is still good here. And Ryan's going to bet again. Let's see if Mike raises again. Ryan bet yes. the flop got raised. Ryan's bet the turn. Mike's raised again. And now Kevin, again, I don't really know what he's staying in there for. He has no draw. You gotta, I mean, he can't he can win the pot, but... Yeah, but you almost have to put the guy in seat seven on an over. Yeah, you, he makes a call. Each time he's had to call two bets, cold. Yeah, and this is going to be another big pot. I mean, that's about $100 there on the turn alone. Here we go to the river. The river's a three. Check by ace nine. And Mike is going to value bet here with queens. That three is pretty harmless. I mean, I guess you cross your fingers and you hope somebody doesn't have two pair here. Look at this, and a call and an and over, call over call by pocket tens. Well, you know, maybe it's because it's seat seven, and he might have been playing crazy the whole time. We've seen him play some trash. Right. That seat six just doesn't give him credit. I mean, he could be doing it. Yeah, but I mean, he doesn't just. Well, yeah, that's my when seat six makes an over call, he's over calling. You mean seat when, seat, when seat five calls in the middle? Yeah, well, he calls and then seat six over calls. So, I mean, even if he thinks that seat seven's bluffing. He's has to, he, he has, has to, to beat, yeah, right. he has to beat somebody else too. Well, he did beat somebody else though. He just didn't beat seat seven. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So. Again, you can email us at live at the bike dot com. <laughs> Button's gonna move over here to seat two. Not right now. Wait till I leave. I don't want the head it, it'll the be you. Big blind is $8 and a uh, small blind is $4. No, no, no. 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 Chips. You said big blind's is $4? Eight, big blind's $8, small blind's $4. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can't you just give me a break? I, th I thought you said big blind was $4, but you said it big blind, small blind. Sorry. <laughs> Seat Boring. nine here. <laughs> Sorry. It's your cold. I can't understand you. A7-4 here. A couple diamonds. I believe the pot was limped around. We got four-way action. Nobody bet on the flop. The turn's a deuce of diamonds. And seat nine actually has got queen deuce. We don't have... Oh, there we go. And he's going to put a bet out. And his hand is good right now. It looks like, right? Queen deuce. He's got a pair of deuces. It looks like. Yeah, it is. He's going to take it down. And the rabbit cam was an ace. Again, those green chips are two dollar chips. That was tough, dude. I don't know and uh, the button head has head moved over here to seat down. three. Nah, I got a gut shot. I'm thinking yeah. one straw, the straight straw possibly. I don't, you know what? I don't care. The jack. It didn't seem like anybody had that jack, so it was like. Hey, Ace king here for seat number eight. Yeah, but I'm so about the hand that was. That's Blake. I'm so glad those queens. You know how many times I give him crack, man. Oh, and let's see if Blake plays it pretty straightforward, and let's see if he's going to raise here. He's in mid position, and he's going to raise. Now Paul has got looks like king jack off suit. He's going to call. Usually, surely for me, that's a three bet or fold hand. Seat one is called with eight five of diamonds, and usually it's fold, with depending on the player. Yeah, king yes. jack off suit. Now we're going to see the flop four ways here with a double bet. Seven, nine, queen. Now ace king is going to bet here. Paul's going to call. He's got a gut shot. 
Douglas is gonna call, he has a gut shot, and Kevin's gonna call, he has a gut shot. Three people with gut shots. And here we go to the turn. Turn's a four. If that 10 comes, Kevin's in trouble. No, Ace King is still good here, right? It, yes. And the river's a six. Doesn't that give Douglas his straight? Douglas with the 5-8 is the straight. And Blake is gonna bet here. And now Douglas is gonna raise. Well, this, just by watching this table, Blake should really fold to this extra bet here. And he does. Oh, that's another guy. That's I mean, even if he had something like pocket tens or pocket jacks, he would probably fold there. Absolutely, you can buy it on my website too. Douglas is gonna take it down there with the straight. What if you don't know how to read? Oh, it's good to have around osmosis. You'll get better by osmosis. You have to have I mean, there's a lot of different things. I, lo I love these nights, Shirley, like tonight and sometimes when we do our 300 to 500 night. Because they're educational nights. I mean, a lot of our viewers, I think, play low limit. We'll get to the bottom of Limit hold'em. Hold especially online. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to see what they would do in certain situations. A C5 picks up pocket aces again. And this time he's in the small blind. And he's going to raise, I believe, now. Yep. And seat one is going to call. And here we go to the flop. King 10 4 with a couple of hearts. Kevin bets. And Douglas folds. I mean, of course, there's, you know, certain things that you can do. I mean, in position, obviously position and limit hold'em is very, very important, too. You can mix up your play, and, you know, you might wait to raise until with top pair if your head's up until the turn mm -hmm. in order to set up a play where maybe you'll raise with a draw on the turn. I mean, a lot of times Barry Greenstein was talking about how usually in the smaller games, people would ra raise with a draw on the flop on the and then flop. check behind on the turn, and it kind of gives away your hand. Well, if you do that on the turn with your good hands and with your draws, sometimes people will even muck top pair to you when you raise on the turn. You know, one single pair. Spot is going to be limped around. Four way action. Jack 10 3 with a couple of hearts. And look at this, George has got top two and seat two. He's going to bet. Action's over to Aram there. I don't know what he's looking at. I guess he's got a gut shot to the nine. He calls. Right. And we're heads up, Jack 10 against 7 8. Aram needs a nine here. Turns a Jack, and now George fills up. And I like the bet there by George, in position and out of position. A lot of times people say, well, why not just check to let the guy catch up? Well, if he's on a draw, and it, I can understand that move, Shirley, and mm -hmm. no limit, mm -hmm. because you obviously you can win the guys, you whole can win stack. a whole mm -hmm. stack on the final betting round. Right. You haven't necessarily missed a bet, no limit, because you can always make up for that. But in limit, I never understood people, say, checking with full houses, say, in position, maybe trying to check to induce a bluff. The guy's on a draw, why not just make him pay for it? Right. If he's gonna call. If you know he's on a draw. Yeah. C Dave has got pocket jacks and the big blind. C4 is gonna hey, open guys, limp with ace eight talk. off suit, and the button's gonna come in with nine ten off suit. And the blind is gonna raise it up here with jacks. We've got three-way action. Ace, jack, six, couple clubs. Blake's hit a set. And he checked it. I believe. Oh, he, oh, he did bet. Oh, excuse me. He bet and seat four called. And look at this. Jack's, they're gonna, he's going to bet blind now. It turns a five. And I think Aram's going to call him down here all the way. Aram is drawing dead. Blake has bet blind again on the river. The river's a four, and it's a third club. And Aaron makes the call here again. Blake's going to take it down there with a set of jacks. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. I don't usually like open limping with Ace Rad. No. But sometimes a lot of players at this level will play Ace Rag just like they do in No Limit, right? Yeah, they think that hand's gold. Well, you know, what I, always, a lot of money. what I always ask some of the people that have come into the booth about why do players play Ace Rag? And I think Barry Greenstein said the same thing too, is that they just watch too much television. Yes. In terms of, in a tournament, and people don't realize how edited these tournaments are. Right, but the a, televised tournaments. Yeah, the televised about. tournaments. Mm -hmm. In a tournament, if you're short stacked, well then, yeah, ace high, especially when you're down to a final table when you're playing four or five handed, mm -hmm. is a big hand. Right. In a full ring cash game, it's garbage. Right. It's absolute garbage. It's pretty much garbage in tournaments, too, until you do make that, like you said, final right. table short handed. Short -handed. Right. But of course, that's what we always see, though. WPT, we see six handed. Six handed, right. you know. Right. Mike raised here with ace queen suited, and Paul mucked it. He had the old deuce seven off suit and big blind. Hey, I'll take the win right now, dude, than, than the, you know, the loss on the river. Believe me. I'll come up, uh, what was that, uh, eight, twelve, what and plus what I do, and, you know, no problem. And uh, the button here has moved over to seat eight. Yeah, it was interesting to hear uh, soundboard Bart, I guess you call it, uh -huh. in my bedroom last night. That was. Fun. I thought it was just the voices in my head at first, but <laughs> then when I heard it the second time, I felt that there was some sort of conspiracy going on. <laughs> just like that! <laughs> I thought it was hallucinating. Boy, we get a raise here. It looks like by seat six, excuse me, seat two raised with ace king, pocket nine smooth called, and jacks in seat seven, three bet. Look at, look at these cans. And uh, Paul called with ace queen suited, and George capped it with ace king off suit. So the pot is four bets, four, bets, four ways. Flop. Here we go to the flop. Well, pretty good flop there for Paul, multi-way, 7-5 deuce, he's got diamonds and over cards. But Ryan's going to bet with his over pair, and Mike is going to raise with his over pair. And I don't think Paul can go anywhere. No. Now, there'd be probably not much of a reason to three bet here, you'd want to keep the people in, in between, right? Well, there's only one other person in between. If he thinks he can three bet and have the other two guaranteed to call. Well, he's going to call, and, he just uh, calls and then George calls. Right. So here we go to the turn. Turn is a nine, and that's a set for Ryan. And if this plays out like we did a couple other hands, oh, wow. You know, I, if I was Ryan and I thought Mike had an overpair, I think I would have bet there again. No, I like the check there because that way it'll get the other players involved in the pot, and then he can put in the race. Well, he's check raised. Because if he bets and then Mike raises, the other players might not call two bets. Well, but there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, Paul would have stayed in there with ace queen. You could have three bet. You could have bet three bet. But again, different ways to play it. He's check raised with three nines here. And let's see what Mike is going to do. Is he going to four bet? He this three, is, he three, three bet. He three this bet. is unbelievable. The size of this pot is insane. Now this oh, it was over $100 pre-flop. Now, look at this. George is finally folded. And I would imagine that Ryan is going to four bet here. And he is going to cap he it. Is. Unbelievable. I mean, this pot alone, or this street alone, is two hundred dollars, sixty-five times three. I mean, we are looking at about a four hundred dollar pot in eight sixteen. This is a gigantic pot for eight sixteen. Well, here we go to the river, and the river is an ace, and that might get Paul involved for an extra bet. He's going to check. Ryan's going to bet. Well, Mike, you were beat there on the turn. He's going to call. And now the issue is for Paul. I mean, the pot's so big. The pot is so big. He said call. Did he say call? I thought he did. No, nope, I guess no, he did. No, he's going to fold. Well, I, mean, I guess he figured he couldn't overcall and that one pair couldn't be good. And uh, Ryan's going to take it down there with a set of nines. I mean, it's funny there on the river, you're facing a $16 bet for a pot that's about $400 to $450. I would say about 
25 big bets where it was in the pot. Do you make that call? And for those of you that are watching there with ace queen, can you make that call with ace queen when the pot is laying you about 25 to 1? There were 25 big bets in the pot. Could he be, have been betting pocket kings there in that spot? One out of 25 times? When the ace comes, instead of checking it, mm -hmm. could he have been betting pocket kings there? Because the, the other guy played it like he had an overpair to the board. Right. So the ace might not affect it. If I'm seat six and I'm playing against seat seven, might I bet anyways? I think but, uh, most players would call. I think that that would be a good play now. on call. Yeah. It was just the pop was so big. <laughs> we had a raise there by seat number three. That ace queen offsuit. Seat five is going to call with ace jack offsuit. Paul's got pocket sevens on the button. He's going to he's in there. So we got another pretty big hand here. Po King queen offsuit is going to call from seat one. And pocket tens. Five-way Five action times a double bet. King, ten, seven. Got a bet there. And look at this. Paul's flopped a set. But look at this. George is also oh, flopped wow, a he's set. Gonna, yep, bigger Two set, sets, yeah. tens and sevens. And let's see the action here on the flop. Paul is raised with his set. Seat one's going to call with king queen, and George is going to jam it with the middle set. So set over set here. And look at this. Allen's in between with ace queen. And Paul's, Paul is going to cap it with pocket sevens. And look at this. Kevin's in there with ace jack and seat five. I mean, this is just craziness. We've got a capped flop here. Another giant pot. Here we go to the turn. Turns a six, and Paul and George probably both still think their hands are good. I would imagine. George is going to bet. <coughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And Douglas is sticking around with top pair of king-queen. Kevin's going to call, it looks like. And you'd imagine Paul's going to raise once again from the button. Probably. Pocket sevens. I mean, unless he puts the... Now, remember, George did not raise out of the blind preflop. A lot of people might do that with kings. But Paul just shuts down. Maybe he thinks he's, the guy's got pocket tens. Well, I mean, someone could have eight, nine. And the river's a four. Look at this. Is Douglas going to come out and bet here? No, he's not. George is going to bet. He bets with pocket tens. Now, let's really... Yeah, and Paul's just going to call. So he really did shut down there. Yes, he did. Set of tens is good there. Set over set. And again, you know, maybe Paul is familiar with George in C2. Against the average player, though, mm -hmm. I probably would raise the turn again against the average player. Um... And then probably get three bet, and then, of course, I have to shut down. Because uh -huh. the guy could be doing that with king ten. He's in the blind. Right. And you don't necessarily yeah. put him on pocket kings if he didn't re-raise out of the blind pre-flop. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he could have had pocket tens, and that's what he had. That is what he had. So just like I'm not, that, remember, I'm one of those pots. not a fan of playing pocket pairs, small pocket pairs pre-flop, and I consider seven small. Here we go with her first chip count. Well, Paul is, I think Paul just lost some there. I think he's yeah, probably he down did. to about maybe 425. Kevin's in the lead with 530. Allen's got about 500 there. Actually, I probably would say that George is now in the lead after winning that huge yeah, pot. That right. pot was huge. He's probably got close to six or 700. It has to be, he has 400. That pot was more than 200, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, probably yeah. closer to seven, more than seven. Heads up here, ace five against ace king. And look at this, and ace, ace, five, ace has five has got a club suited. draw against ace king with top pair. Turn is an ace, look at this, and now Aram's got the club draw with top pair, but Blake's got top two, and he's going to bet again. And Aram just calls. He just calls. So here we go to the river, Blake is going to have to dodge a club, and the river's a club, and there it is. There it is, and he's going to bet it. 
and Blake just calls an ace five of clubs is going to take it down there. Got the flush. What's well, interesting you said that about Paul with pocket sevens on the button. Mm -hmm. I think I would have played it the same way as him, though. I mean, mm -hmm. it was raised. You've got a couple people in before you. Right. So it's a multi-way pot. You can call it with pocket pair on the button to try to I know that set. you would. I don't. I, I, I don't. Sorry. <laughs> you look at me strangely. <laughs> um, I consider um, any pair below, below tens. You know, tens are higher, I'll play. You wouldn't call with pocket eights or pocket nines, nope. say, to a double size bet with like nope. three or four people in between? No. Really? No, I, I will play pocket eights or nines if nobody shows strength and I'm in position and I can raise with it, but I'm not going to call a raise with it. So I wouldn't even limp with that. Look at this post here by Russ but McGinley. My limit play is really tight. I mean, you've seen me play no limit. I'm loosey goosey, but. Maybe not quite that bad. Well, some people would make a case that not pocket that nines is a three-bet hand from the button, too, you know. Mm -hmm. now, In certain situations, absolutely. Look at this. Russ McGinley on 2 plus 2 writes, Isaac really needs to upload all those Bart bites somewhere so we can all download them. <laughs> there you go. Dave was talking about how he had a keyboard where you push a key and it would say like a saying. That's what they'll do. They'll, do they'll download them, and every time they hit a button, it's like... Buttons moved over here to seat three. <laughs> well, that's a funny post here on two plus two. Seat two is raised we'll here. To, we'll get to that in a second. Ace nine of diamonds. And seat five is going to make a call here with deuce three offsuit. Queen, deuce, jack, all rainbowed. Kevin checks. George is going to bet. And let's see what Kev Kevin's going to make the call. He's got a pair. Here we go to the turn. Turns a three. Now he has no, two, yeah, pair. two pair. He's going to check. And George is going to bet again. <coughs> Let's see if Kevin check raises. He just calls. He just calls. Wow. He's just going to call. I'm sure he won't get a check raise in here. And the river's George, nine. George will check. Nope. Oh, now he's going to he bet. Bets. Now he's going to bet. I got two pair. And I think that George has called. Oh, wait a minute. No, George has not called. He folds. There it is. I kind of gave it away when Kevin said I have two pair before George acted. Yeah. So anyways, this, this post here by Wilcox said uh, that they should include a BART ringtone with each archive subscription. I want my phone to scream, look at this, while standing in line to renew my driver's license. Button's going to move over here to seat four. And seat eight is going to come in for a raise with ace rag, ace four off suit. Seat three is going to cold call with ace jack off suit. Again, usually a three better fold hand for me. Right. And the button's got pocket jacks and he just calls. <laughs> so Blake's the razor with the worst hand. Ten, seven, deuce. Blake is going to bet here. A call here by Allen, and Aram is going to raise with the overpair. Let's see if Blake is smart enough to just get away from it. He does. Gets away from it here on the flop. But Allen's going to call here with overcards. Turn is a queen. It's a spade. And he checks. And Aram's going to check right behind him. And the river's a deuce. And look at this. Alan's going to bet, and I'm sure that Aram is probably going to call. And jacks are good here. There's another mistake that I think a lot of people make in uh, limit holding, Shirley. Try to bluff. Well, chasing with overcards mm -hmm. on that type of flop. I mean, you don't have any spades. He did, yeah, he didn't even there's, have an ace or jack spades There's in two spades out there. Especially if you've got overcards with an ace, mm -hmm. chances are some a lot of times, especially if it's multi-way, if you hit your ace, your ace is no good because you're up against someone two, just pair. Hit two pair. Yeah, I think it was written somewhere, and again, there's so many poker books out there that if you want to chase with overcards, it's sometimes better to chase with king queen with overcards as opposed to ace king mm -hmm. or ace queen, just because, I mean, sometimes you know your your overcards might be good. Button moves over here to seat five. Shot. 
And I think that they're going to chop this one up. Looks like it. They're going to chop it up. It's a battle of the testosterone at this table, ladies and gentlemen. Do you want to chop or not? They're not kidding. It's a battle of testosterone. Yeah. I will if you will. Exactly. I've played with people before who... Did you hear about that chick that died from peanut butter? No. You didn't? No. Apparently, this this lady had a deathly allergic peanut react, like a, a deathly, you know, peanut allergy. Reaction to peanuts? Peanut uh -huh. allergy. And she kissed her boyfriend a week after her boyfriend ate a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and she died. No way. Yeah. Isn't that strange? That's really strange. I mean, does the yeah, boyfriend Isaac brush his wait. teeth? God. Seat three is raised here with when Ace Queen that in suit. Did I just heard about it today? And Alan's going to bet here. He hit top pair. It takes it down. Okay. That, that oh. makes more sense to me. We're hearing from Evelyn. She kissed him right after he ate the sandwich and died a week later. I thought it was that she kissed him <laughs> a week after they ate the peanut butter and jelly huh. sandwich. And, they, and uh, she died. Well, some people do have, like, uh, really bad uh, peanut allergies. It's something with that type of allergy that can kill you as a food mm -hmm. allergy. Limp, limp here. Button's going to limp. Blinds, check it. Small blind completes. We get five-way action. Pot's $40. Here we go with the flop. Queen, four, eight. Couple clubs. Looks like seat number six has got queen, ten. He's going to bet top pair. And it doesn't look like anyone can call here. Well, Kevin's got a pair. He's going to call. He calls. Calls with bottom pair. Now he's picked up a heart draw. Turns a nine. Ryan bets. Yep, and Kevin's going to call there with the pair and the heart draw. And the river's There's a the heart, heart, and it gives Ryan a straight. And look at this. Kevin checks his backdoor flush. And he's just going to call. Ryan bets. No, no, he's going to check raise. He's going to check raise. He's check raise with the backdoor heart. I mean, what a card on the river there. It completes Ryan straight. I was just thinking, boy, the jack of hearts on the river is going to kill Ryan, and that's exactly what happened. Kevin takes it he down must have there. verbally declared that one. I didn't hear him. I bought him a cup of coffee that afternoon. I appreciate that coffee, sir. Unbelievable. Well, again, normally, I mean, normally, you know, in the pot that is unraised, you don't have the odds to try to hit trips or two pair when mm -hmm. you hit the board. If right. it's a raised pot, you can take one off. But, right. but in limit, you know, if it's just limped around, um, that's usually not the best play. Seat seven's going to raise here. Seat seven is raised with pocket tens. And, uh, wow, Paul is called with eight three of clubs. Probably playing the player, surely. Jack, deuce, nine. Paul's got a flush draw. And it looks like Paul has, I want to say check called here. Turn is a 10, and Mike's hit a set, but Paul's open-ended open with his club draw. And a flush. Yeah, he's got an open-ended straight draw and a club draw. Mike has bet again. Uh-oh, and Paul's going to raise. He's going to raise with that big draw. Unfortunately for him, though, Mike has got a big hand. He has a set, but will he re-raise? Well, could you be? Because I think Paul, Paul's been playing fairly tight. I mean, could you be scared we know he has eight three. Queen? Yes. Yeah. And he um, did re-raise. He Mike did No, but knowing Paul the way he plays, I, he went yeah. called with Queen. And King. the river's a seven, and there's he the straight. straight. And Paul should really bet this here. Oh, Paul, did, yep, he's going to bet it. It gets checked to him, and Paul's going to bet. And Mike says, you have an eight, I'm going to pay you off. And there you go, Paul's going to take it down there with eight three of clubs. Wow. Unbelievable. This game is absolutely amazing. Well, he had a big draw on the turn there. Chose to check raise with that draw. I understand the idea 
of Paul there. The only problem is against a player, which seems like seat seven, mm -hmm. if there's almost no chance that he's going to fold to a check raise, what's the point? Right. You're behind anyways, right? Because all you have yeah, is Yeah, I think draw. moves like that don't work as well in, in, in limit. In limit. In, well, in lower limits, too. Like the 816, yeah. I mean, it would yeah. work much, much better in the 2040 Because Because the guy's probably going to call you down with any pair and mm -hmm. at least call you down with ace-king. Right. Of course, a semi-bluff can check. I mean, that is a check raise semi-bluff, but part of you know, a semi-bluff being effective is the fact that there's a chance that the guy's going to fold right there. Well, from watching that guy, I'd say there's pretty much no chance he's going to fold, right? Right. Unless he's got absolutely right. nothing. But I do like the idea there by Paul. Button has moved over here to seat three. Is it? C2 is raised here with pocket queens, and we've got three-way action here going to the flop. That 4-3. King 5-8, and King Jack is hit top pair there, Douglas in seat one. Gets checked to George, he bets. So let's see what Douglas is going to do. He just calls. He just called. Looked like he was going to check raise, though. He's yeah, he had the chips in his, in his hand. hand. Turn to 10, and now he bets, and George just calls. So he just he check called on the flop. You would imagine that's that the turn. that, <laughs> that George would know that his queens aren't good when you see Douglas with eight chips in his hand ready to raise. Well, Douglas is bet here again. George calls. King Jack is good. <laughs> yeah, I don't put a lot of credence in tells and limit, but that's probably a good one. Yeah, I, I would think that. so. Yep. So it looks like a couple people agree with me there about that ace-queen suited on the river, surely. Mm -hmm. Again, one out of 25 times do I think that that guy might have pocket kings. Mm -hmm. And another thing that Sykes on 2 plus 2 wrote was that if I fold there and my hand is good, I'm not prone to go on tilt, but that actually might put me on tilt. Well, and it would put a lot of players on yeah, tilt, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's a good point. Player. We got a limped pot here. Three-way action. Eight, six, six, and Douglas has got trip sixes. Seat number one. Ryan bets. Douglas just Does calls. Does Douglas ever put in a raise? Well, you know that he just thinks that he's clever, slow playing here. And look at this. Kevin calls with overcards. Turns a ten. It's a third heart. Check, check. Douglas is going to bet here. Well, Kevin's got the jack of hearts in his hand. And he doesn't get either. He folds it. Sorry, guys. And Ryan folds. They caught the wind. <laughs> Not you, man, either. The fan. Again, you can email us live at the bike.com. Questions, comments, suggestions. So you listened to us last night, so you were hearing us say that this time that green was you. Did you hear that? Was what? You, was you? Yeah, I did. There, yeah, I did hear that. Like that, Bart's awesome. That wasn't me, though. Well, I, I know. <laughs> we were kidding. Here. Bart Hansen rules. <laughs> okay, Bart. <laughs> We got a limp in here by C2 with pocket threes. And Alan's going to raise here with uh, Queen Jack off suit. And I do not believe Mike is in the hand, which probably means he didn't have pocket eights. Ace King five here. George checks. And look at that. Alan bets. And George had the best hand, but how can you call there against a raiser with pocket threes? Ace King five on board. Well, you know, some people arguing with me, some people agreeing with me about the pocket pair. But, I mean, I have my own style of playing, but I will tell you this, just because it says something in a book that says you have to do it, I mean, I'm not going to do it because a book says so. Do it what I think is right. But you have, I might be wrong. You but. have heard of Ed Miller, though, right? 
Yeah, well, that, I'm just saying. No, but I, I'm saying I think that some of these people will hold you above David, though. You've heard of him. Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't know if you know what I, I'm talking I, I about. I know, I know that I won't. But, yeah. All right. <laughs> Right, they gave him a hard time one time when he said, who's Ed Miller, or right. something to that effect, yeah. All right, Mike is raised here at Pocket Sixes, and we're going to get several calls, and we've got four-way action. Mike is the betting lead. He raised out of the blind with Pocket Sixes. 10-9-5, and he's going to bet. And uh, Blake raises here at seed eight with Jack-10. He's got top pair. King-Queen's going to call with overcards and a gut shot. And what is Mike trying to hit here? He makes the call to the raise. Turns an ace. Blake's going to bet again. And George calls now. He's got, he's, uh, and the river here is a three. And it goes check, check. And jack, ten is good. No, but it, I mean, that issue with pocket pairs and late position, it uh -huh. brings it back. It, it's almost the same type of equation that you do in no limit. Mm -hmm. I look at it as... Well, say in a 20-40 game, if somebody raises, so let's say I'm going to put 40 in with pocket fours. Mm -hmm. Can I make 400 if I hit my set in the pot? Well, I mean, it depends. If, if you're on the button and it's been raised and there's been a caller in between and you already have or two callers in between, there's right. three people. Right. Good chance that they have a higher pair than you do. And exactly what happened here that we saw could happen to you. You lose a huge pot because you well, hit a set and someone else hits a bigger set. Well, you could, but I mean, what are the chances that I mean, obviously you're right about, you know, someone might have a bigger pair than you, but what mm -hmm. are the chances really that it's going to be set over set? Mm -hmm. Very uh, few and far between, I think, and I think it's worth it, those reversed implied odds, mm -hmm. to try to hit your set. When well, I mean, I've, in from my experience, I've seen it the other way where I play my big pairs and I've seen people get in trouble with me because they hit a set. So, you know, just when, when they do that, I think, oh, you know, kind of tells me that's why I don't play those things. Yeah, we had a raise and a three bet here. Mike three bet with ace five of clubs. Allen raised with ace king in seat three. And Allen flopped the nut straight. Queen jack ten. And he is going to bet. Let's see if Mike is stubborn. Look at this. Mike is stubborn. He's going to raise with ace five. He three bet with ace five of clubs on the button. And now Allen's going to re-raise. So is Mike going to chase the backdoor club draw here? He raised the flop. The guy has three bet him now. The guy was the initial pre-flop raiser. And he's going to call. I mean, what do you put the guy on? He could have ace-king. The turn is a queen. And, of course, Mike is drawing to a chop now. Allen bets. I mean, sometimes you just got to give up, right? Yeah. And there he goes. Another big guy? I don't think there's anything wrong with being loose aggressive as a style, although it's not my favorite style of limit, but the good loose aggressive players know where they're at in hands and know when to release hands, right. save extra bets. I mean, if you're going to get tricky with ace-five and raise the flop there, mm -hmm. once the initial pre-flop raiser three bets me, uh -huh. why would you call? You're done. You're right. I mean, I know it's, it's just one extra bet, but there's no reason to call. I think that some people do it now, from what I've seen, is because they put that raise in and the person puts a three bet in and they don't want to make it look like they were bluffing. I know that it's really you know, silly, but I think that a lot of people do that. <laughs> Button is in C8 here. Raise here by seat seven. He's got seven nine of hearts. Paul is called. King five of diamonds in the small line. Seat one's in there. Seat three's in there. Four players. Four way action. Two small bets. Times four. Ace queen eight. Allen's got two pair. He's got top. He's got a uh, bottom two. And he's gonna bet. Does anybody else have a pair? Well, let's see if I Mike. I don't think anyone else has a pair. Mike was the pre flop raiser. Is he gonna be stubborn here again? Nope, not no. this time. And Paul's out of there. Oh, it does. I can see it at 10 o'clock. And there it is. 
It's on now, and then at 10 again. So we got it. For those folks that didn't get enough, they can watch it again. That's right, Paul. Of course, you can always watch us at any time by signing up for the archives. Just $14.95 a month gets you a subscription. All of the action, just click on the archives banner in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. It's a great Christmas present, stocking stuffer. Somebody that wants to learn the game. C3 is going to raise here. Ace Jack. The clubs. And he folds. C7 folds. And uh, Paul is going to re raise. He's got Ace Queen. He's going to make it three bets on the button. And he does have it heads up, and he's in a good spot. He's got Allen, the initial pre-flop raiser, dominated. Flop comes king, 7-3. Paul bets. Yeah, Paul's going to bet. And Allen calls. Turns a five. Allen checks, and Paul's going to bet again. You're talking about calling with two overs. Allen yeah. called with only Look one this. over. He's calling he's all calling the way again. with ace jack. And now Paul's going to think his hand's probably no good. Rivers is six. And now, Paul's going to bet, probably thinking that he needs to bet here because his hand is no good. And uh, he takes it down. But his hand was good. You know, it's funny, you were saying that you guys were having trouble with the emails last night. Mm -hmm. Looks like we're having trouble. I, I, I was laughing in my head uh -huh. a little bit last See, night. See, that's because, what it was doing. Because I was like, how, do they, how are they having trouble with the emails? But now I realize that that's what I had to do all We're, night long. Yeah, I had to hit that thing. Something wacky going on here. <laughs> now we're getting emails. <laughs> and now you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. David got so frustrated with it, he <laughs> finally handed me the mouse. Like, you do it. <laughs> See, it's still going. We got a raise here by seat seven. He's got ace jack off suit. Seat seven raises. I won't be home by that time. And looks like we're going to see multi multi way action with a double size bet in here. So here we go. Five way action. To the flop. Mike's the initial raiser with ace jack. King, queen, four, all diamonds. Paul's flop the nut flush over there in seat nine. And look at this. Ryan's got top two pair, and he bets. And it looks like Mike, has Mike raised? He's getting stubborn again, Charlotte. He's raised with a black ace jack in seat seven mm -hmm. just because he's the pre-flop raiser. Yes. Can't this guy get rid of a hand? And Paul just calls. He's got the nut flush. And Aram's going to call with What's queen he doing? ten. Wow. He doesn't even have a ten of diamonds in his hand. Now look at this. Ryan's going to three bet here with king queen. And Mike really needs to get out of here now. Ryan has three bet with King Queen. So Paul knows that Ryan's got to have a big hand. Let's see if Paul just smooth calls here and then raises him on the turn. Side and Mike called. Unbelievable. I think Mike might be all in. I think Mike is all in. Turns a six of spades. And we got a bet here. A bet here by seat six, and now Paul's going to raise with a nut flush. And Mike is called, and Paul's going to win a big pot here if he can dodge a king or a queen. And the river's a four. Check, Paul bets again with a nut flush, and he's going to take Paul. it down with a nut flush. That's a nice pot. Yep. I mean, Mike, he just couldn't you get gotta rid of it. you got to love it when you flop the nuts like that, and people are still in the pot, like, going crazy. Did you, did you miss that one? Where'd that, where'd that email go? Oh, there we go. Yeah, David Moxness, he emailed us. He said, hey, Bart, you need to copyright your Bartgasms. Sell them on Live at the Bike. Have the Poker Blue do, girl do a commercial for you. Oh, that's a good idea. Definitely well, you know, a good idea. Was that too, too unbelievable? Yeah. At that point, it's, he raises it's one more bet, and I'm drawing live. It was pretty amazing. Everyone was doing all the betting. So the button has moved over here to seat two. Mm -hmm. 
We had an email here by uh, Kevin in Indy. Uh, we'll, we'll get to after this hand. Again, you can email us at live at the bike.com. Five way action limped around. Ace King three with a couple of clubs. Okay. All right. It gets checked over to seat one. He's going to bet with Ace Rag that he limped in with. Aram calls the gut shot to the jack. He's got a red queen 10. Turns a queen. Now let's see if he gets involved even more. I would imagine he will. Check. Douglas is going to bet here. Boy, that's just unbelievable. Yeah, and Aram's going to call here with queen 10. The, this, the play on here is just amazing. Man. And the river's a four. And it gets checked down here at the end. I think I definitely still would have value bet that guy up on the river. I still would have value bet him with my ace. He's calling with any pair. Mm -hmm. I mean, ace eight, I know you're not thrilled about your kicker, but you can win an extra bet that way, right? So this guy emails us, Kevin and Indy. He says, um, Kevin over there in seat seven who got up seems but to be I don't playing. I think the that's Kevin. That's Mike. Kevin's in seat five. Okay. I, I, but I think he was talking yeah. about seat seven. So he seems to be playing the low end of the deck, which I sometimes understand no limit play, but I wonder if the implied odds are enough to make this EV and limit. Positive. And that's a good right. point, and probably the answer to that is no. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be playing three, four suited and limit. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I can understand being aggressive and driving Six forward and three betting with those hands very, very occasionally, but those hands have very little value. And if you're going to three bet with three, four suited, you're doing it because you think that the player who raised to your right is weak, and you can take the you know the take it away, away from them, them. not necessarily without trying to make a hand, right? You know, not in a showdown, right? <laughs> Turn is a queen here. We got a bet here by Ryan, called by Douglas. What is Douglas calling there with seven, eight? He's got a gut shot to the nine. And the river is a queen. And George has made trips here at the end. And he's going to bet it. He's going to bet with the queen jack. Well, I think the bike is having their anniversary here. Yes, their 20th. Yeah. 20, 21st anniversary. George uh, bets there. And Can he you see the free food that we're handing out earlier? I did. I did. I did indeed. Now the button has moved over here to seat four. God, I wish I could stop coughing, Shirley. Mm -hmm. Man. I'm here for all the live at the bike loyal viewers. Two players. Heads up here. Ace Deuce against Ace Jack suited. Allen raised. And Douglas called with Ace Deuce. Allen's going to bet here with top pair. And he's going to take it down. And there it is. So we're going to get to the next hand here. you enjoy it though? Yeah, I really do. I would read it then, yeah. It's got, it's got uh, all the local casinos, Hollywood Park, Commerce, Mike, Ship to Vegas, Plain Paris, Two Friends, Best Language in the English. The button here is in seat six. Great, I'd love to read it. Raise it. This year, yeah. And seat three is going to raise here with ace, queen, a spade. Three players. And we've got three-way action here. Ten, seven, deuce, rainbow. No one's hit anything here. And he's going to bet. Alan's going to bet here with overcards. And Douglas is going to call here again with a single pair. Turns a three. Alan's got a spade draw. Let's see if he checks behind the turn. Now he's going to bet again. And Douglas is going to call. And the river here is a four. And the deuce is good. Let's see if Alan bets it again. 
No, he's going to check it down. King Deuce takes it down. What do you think about sometimes checking the turn when you have outs as opposed to betting the turn when you don't have outs? Or, you, like, he picked up a pretty big draw there on the turn. Uh huh. Would you check behind him to take the free card, whereas, like, if you didn't have that spade draw, you bet? I mean, it depends on the player, so it depends on the situation. I mean, because you, you definitely want to see the river there, right, with ace-queen right. of spades. Right. So you don't want to be check-raised, so right. you wonder. Uh, wow, pocket kings, ace-queen of diamonds. We got a raise here and a re-raise. And George is going to make the call. And we are heads up. Oh, there's the ace. Ace 10 3. And Alan bets, and George just check calls here. The turn's a four. And Alan bets again, and George just calls again. I guess George must be scared of ace king here. And the river is a five. Ace queen is good. And there it is. Kept betting there with the kings. George played it kind of passively. Seat number seven's a new player. It's Brian. Buttons in seat nine. Raise it. Raise it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I don't believe George. Can we raise it. there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. George is on seat fire. nine. Yeah. Two callers. Yeah. Brian's calling with ten six of diamonds. Flop the eight four deuce. I forgot what I had. Check. Check around. Turns a queen. Paul's the best hand here. Raise it. Raise it. Brian bet. Paul raised in seat nine. Brian calls hit the diamond draw. Hit the diamond. And he hits the diamond. <laughs> this is getting the back of my neck the whole yeah. time. Hey, sir, you're sitting down. Can you stand oh, up for that? Is that what that is? I, I didn't see the little red light go. Bing, bing, bing. He hits Ready? a flush draw. He checks. Paul bets, and now he raises. Well, my sister got my good side and my bad side. Huh? Yeah, I got both of them at the same time. But she doesn't hear me. Talk. And Paul calls. One thing I noticed in this game, in the 816 game, is usually that when the players have a big hand, it's kind of a tell when they stick out the whole stack of 20 chips and pull four off rather than cutting, you know, 16 chips. Hey, Bunt moves over to seat one. Seat five limps. Seat one calls. So George right? calls in seat two. Okay, there are four players. Seat three checks. Four players. Flop is seven, six, deuce. Seat two bets. Three players. Seat five calls and one calls. Three players in the pot. It's one, two, and five. Rivers and Ace of Hearts. Show. One pass. Six is. Six is good. Checked around. George's going to win with a pair of sixes.
Well, it looks like I just left the room for a second and nothing seems to have changed, huh? Pair what, they're still playing, yeah, they're yeah. still playing crazy. Pair of sixes. Garbage is winning the hand. kidding me? <laughs> Sometimes it never seems to amaze me, right? You know, especially in this limit play. Button's going to move over here to seat two. Seat six is going to limp in. And excuse me, that's seat seven who's limped in with eight, seven of diamonds. There's a little suited connector you talk about. Not, not a lot of value in limit hold'em. Four-way action, ace, four, three with a couple of clubs. Aram's hit top pair. Allen has a flush draw. Aram's going to bet here with ace, ten. Brian is going to fold. And Allen's going to make the call there with the flush draw. The club and he comes. Hits it. Yeah, there it is. And it looks like he's going to bet it. He bets right into it. And it looks like Aram wanted to raise there, but I think he realizes that it's a uh, third club. And he just calls. And the river's a king. And Allen bets again. And Aram's saying, uh, look at that, there's a wheel on board, too. Mm -hmm. He can't beat a deuce, either. And he's going to pay him off, though. And he takes it down with the flush. And there we go. Those green chips are $2 chips. This game is exactly the same as our 2040 game where we use $5 chips. Button is over there in seat three. This is a 4-8 chip structure game, which usually has more action than, say, a 3-6 game, which is like a 30-60 game or a 6-12 game. Right. Now, seat seven is limped in here. Queen, ten of clubs. Seat eight is going to raise with ace, jack, off suit. Three bets. And seat number one is going to three bet with ace, six, suited. Wow. That's a hand that would instantly go in the muck for me. Three players. And Blake calls and seat seven calls. And we've got three-way action here. And Blake probably d is not happy that he's got to take ace, jack for three bets. But Douglas three bet him with ace, six. Clock comes ace, king, eight. And Douglas bets here. Got checked to him. Brian folds. And now let's see how Blake is going to play this. He's going to check raise. He puts a, yeah, puts in a raise now. And Douglas and calls. And that probably answered the question. Is my ace jack good? That blind. And he bets blind here. Again, something that he did with the jacks before. Right. Now he's bet blind. And Douglas is going to call. And Douglas is going to need to hit a six here. And Blake is bet blind, bets again. blind again. And the river's a deuce. And he gets called. Now, my question to you, Shirley, and all those viewers out there, is that if I see a guy do that, let's say I had ace king on the flop, or I had flopped a set of aces, or uh -huh. a set of kings, or a set of eights for that matter. Uh huh. Because that's, just, you know, those are the hands that I would have freed that to be in that position with pre flop. Maybe pocket eights, maybe. Definitely aces, kings, or ace, king. If he check raises me on the flop, well, I might just call. And now he's going to bet blind in the turn. So if I raise him on the turn, what is he going to do? Is he going to continue to call down with ace, jack? Sometimes I don't, that's why I don't necessarily like putting myself in that position with a check raise because I'm on a position. Mm -hmm. And if I bet the turn and get raised on the turn, Mm -hmm. Am I going to stick around for two more big bets with Ace Jack there right. on that board? So you can sometimes put yourself in a tough spot. Option. So you're Black saying that player. you would just check call? No, I probably would bet and see what happens. King five. Oh, rather here. than check raise on yeah. the flop, you would just bet out on the flop. Yeah. Got it. All spades. Kevin's going to bet here with top pair. King nine. And it looks like he's going to take it down. There, sir. Send it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I 
I was showing him where the chips go, sir. I was Believe letting, me. I was There's a him post here by exactly Arvin, who's posted here on 2 Plus 2 before. Shirley and Bart, this show is great to watch. I think we're watching a general model for all low limit poker games. Very educational and very entertaining. Well, thank you very much. First day, huh? Here we go with it. another chip count. And Kevin there has the most chips with $560. And George, George is like right there with $520. Aram's not doing so hot in seat number four. I don't think uh, Brian, the new player, is not doing so hot neither. So who's the guy that's probably won the most money so far tonight? You know, it's it's hard Great to players. say. I thought George was doing really well, but I think he's lost it, lost some. So two and five have the most chips. We got three-way action here. Ace four ten. It was raised pre-flop, I believe. Was it by Kevin in seat five? And he's hit top pair. He raised with ace rag. And Douglas is going to check call with king ten, second pair. Turns a deuce. Kevin has the only club in his hand. He's going to bet again. Bet in a call. Rivers a five, and the ace eight is good here. And he's going to call. Kevin bets there with the ace eight. Douglas makes the call. And there it is. <laughs> Send it again there for yeah. uh, for Kevin in seat five. And he actually bet the river there with ace eight. I play the 816 a lot, and I don't realize, you know, because you can't see everybody's cards at all times. Yeah. But how many times these players are calling with, like, really bad pair, you know, like they're not laying them down. Like I just in seat one called all the way down with second pair, and we've seen bottom pair. They call all the way down with bottom pair. And Ace King there for seat nine, Paul. Again, we are playing 816 limit hold'em here. Right, We're live at the bike. The green chips are two dollars. We're playing two dollar increment. Right. Four eight chip structure. Blue mm -hmm. chips are one dollars. We webcast cash games every Monday through Friday from six to nine. We usually try to have one limit game a week. Then we have a raise here by Paul. He's got ace king of clubs, and we got three way action. The flop comes six six eight. So Douglas has top pair, but Paul's going to bet. Actually, Paul bet a little too much there. He bet two, st two. He bet eight chips, but it's only four chips. The first betting round. Douglas calls, turns a six. Well, Paul has a club draw, but Douglas has made a full house, and Paul bets again. So Paul would need to catch an ace or a king to win here. And look at this. There's a raise here by Douglas. And obviously, again, if you're Paul, you know that your clubs aren't good. So can I take one off to try to hit six outs here on the river? And he makes the call. And the river's a queen, so he's made the flush. And let's see if he's smart enough to check fold here, Shirley. Well, oh, he Douglas didn't, he doesn't have, bet. yeah. Yeah, he Douglas doesn't bet. didn't have to bet. make that decision. Yeah. But again, I, I wonder what would have happened there if he had... I think Paul's a pretty smart guy. I think he would have folded. I think so. Yeah. I think he would have folded. Thank you, player. But again, it just means, though, if you put the guy on a pair that you're really spiking, you're trying to spike over cards, right, yeah. on the river. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of course, you can visit Shirley Rosario's website, pokerbabes, poker-babes.com. And I got to tell you, I went to that other Poker babe site by mistake yesterday. It's without real, the hyphen. like, generic very generic kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. very generic. Yeah, so you can't throw down the loot to buy that from that person? Oh, wow. <laughs> I tried working out a deal with them. They stole some of my content, and oh, I said, really? oh, well, in order to make it up, why don't you sell me this site for this amount of money? And they <laughs> said, no, sorry. Well, seat three has come in for an open raise here. He's got King Jack off suit, but seat four has got pocket rockets, and he's going to three bet. Now, Paul, wow, he's going to call him small blind, three bets cold with ace eight suited. Sometimes a lot of people, you know, fall in love with ace rag suited in this game too, Shirley. Mm -hmm. It's really not a, a valuable hand. King nine jack rainbow. But look at this, Allen's flop top two pair, and he's gonna bet right away, right into it, right into the three better. 
And Aram's going to raise with the overpair. I'm sure Paul's going to get out of there. He does. And Allen's going to three bet. And Aram calls. So Allen's in the lead here with King Jack. The turn's an eight. And it looks like Allen's going to bet here again with top two pair. And Aram's going to, let's see, Aram is going to, he's going to call. call. So Allen needs to dodge a nine or an eight or an ace here on the river. And the river's a four. Wow, he checks it now. And look at this. Now, 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 uh, Aram's going to bet thinking well, his hand's the point. good. There was only seven chips left. Yeah. Seat four only had seven chips. I don't understand that at all. Why, no. why would you check there in order for the other guy to check right behind you, right? Yeah. Especially when he doesn't have any chips, he's going to call those seven chips. Well, the point exactly. Right. Sometimes people just say, well, I'll be nice, and somebody, I'll check. Yeah, but somebody with seven chips might say, okay, I'm going to check here and save these seven chips just in case. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, he was going to call with an overpair. I mean, someone might say, well, he was checking to induce a bluff. Not in that situation, <laughs> right? No way. Button's moved over here to seat nine, and Paul's got ace-queen on the button over there. Looks like that's the best hand so far. But look at this, seat eight's going to raise with king eight. Let, and I think Paul's going to three bet. We've seen him do it before with ace-queen, and he does. Yes, he does. And look at this, seat two says, king I want to gamble, cap yeah. He's got king jack suited. And look at this, Blake folds his hand. Blake's out of there with King-8. He, he was the open razor over there in the cutoff, and we're heads up. 8-7-6, George caps it and then checks. And Paul checks Paul right checks behind, behind him. And there's the jack on the turn, and now he bets. And look at that again. Paul's pretty smart. I mean, what would that guy have capped it with? Mm -hmm. He checked the flop, and then he bet the turn. Well, what are you going to be ahead with ace-queen usually? I mean, somebody might cap it with ace-king, right? But still, ace-queen's not going to be ace-king, right? Right. Now, we were talking, uh, our, I don't know, did you put in your journal? I, I actually read your latest journal entry about um, your heads-up match. I watched you play in the tournament here. Right. Head, uh, ho, ho, hold them. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think you did played really well, and it was a, it was a great match. It was a really good match. Because you guys played for what, like a half an hour, forty five minutes to play. I would say. Like I know you guys yeah, are the last minimum. ones, right? Mm -hmm. Last ones to finish. Yes, because as soon as I walked out, they said, "Yeah, all tournament players back." Well, the funny thing is, is that I don't know if you mentioned it. After that, we had a fifteen thirty yeah. Omaha high low game going here, which is right, rare. which I jumped in, you were in, and then I jumped in with you. And I'll get to the rest that of the story fun. at the end of this hand here. Pocket aces over here for seat three. And he's in the big blind. And let's see if he's going to re-raise. He is. He's going to raise it out of the blind here. Everyone had limped in, so he's going to put a little value raise in here. And look at this. Somebody three bet, and he's going to cap it here with the aces. It's another thing that David got uh, got a little heat for. Sometimes he said that he didn't raise out of the big blind with aces. But usually in a small stakes game here, especially multi-way, you're going to do that for value. David got heat for that? I remember you saying that way back when. Way back when. Yes. <laughs> You've since changed, huh? Changed your mind. 10-4-3 here. Let's see if Brian gets in trouble. He's got top pair. Alan's going to bet. Kevin calls with King Deuce suited. Wow. Unbelievable. Brian's going to call here. And Douglas calls, peeling for overcards in a backdoor flush drop. Turns a three, and that's a great card for Allen if somebody doesn't have a three. Because now no one can make two pair on him, right? And I want to say, is everyone else drawing dead here with the exception of Brian to a ten? Brian is yes. the only one yes. drawing live here to a ten in seat seven. Two outs here. Yeah. He makes the call again. And here we go to the river. And the river's a five. It's a third spade. Wow, again, if I was Alan, I would have bet that. Yes. I mean, it's a value bet miss yes. there again, isn't it? And Ace is up is going to take it down there. Um, so anyways, we played 15-30 Omaha. Right. And you played with me for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. I, I played in that game for seven hours, mm -hmm. and I won $2,200 yeah, in a 15-30 game. That's awesome. Yeah. 
I don't even know. I think I won only like $100. I was just really tired that night. Yeah. Remember, I woke up and, and picked up my friend from the airport real early that morning, and then I went and played the tournament, and that heads-up match, you know, that, well, you know, that tournament took a lot out of me, but I wanted to go play. I mean, we don't have 1530 Omaha live, you know, here that often. You go home and play it online, but I like playing live. Like I said, there's Plus always... Plus, you, you feed me a beer and then forget it. I'm just uh, <laughs> so tired. There's always Gotta one at go. the table, and I said Shirley was it, because she kept raising and re-raising, and they kept saying, boy, there's always one. <laughs> <laughs> you know my style by now. It works for me. Now we get a raise here by Brian with pocket jacks. Blake, whoa, and uh, Blake three bet. Kevin called three bets with five three, and now Brian's capped it with pocket jacks. Raised by Jax. Blake, I believe, re-raised. Kevin called, and Brian four bet. King 10, nine here. And Blake has hit a set. Not a great flop for Pocket Jax, and he's gonna raise immediately with the set. I don't know, I don't think it's too bad, do you think? Well, There's only one overcard, and he has a gut shot. You're right, and, and there's the gut it. shot. Queen on the turn. And he's gonna bet right into it. And look at this, Blake raises. Now, the, the thing here is that Blake raised the flop, remember. So do you really think he has ace-jack? I think you might even be able to raise here again, right? I think so. Because you're, you're only scared I of ace-jack. I, I think Blake raised not realizing that Brian only needed a jack. Don't right. you think? Well, I think he just jumped the gun with the set. I, I think, think so. I would re-raise, and he does re-raise. Yeah. He prematurely acts. I mean, we've seen him bet blind a lot, and I think he was just already ready that he was going to bet a raise on on the turn. So here we go to the river. And the river pairs the board. Oh, wow. There it is. Now that's a sound bite. Yep. Oh, wow. Now, now, did Brian check and then check call there on the river? Because that's probably what I would have done with the jacks there. But regardless, Blake takes down a big pot, about $300. Wow. Look at that shirt he's got on there. Is that like a variation of Sprite to straight? <laughs> obey your instinct. Yep. Because cool. isn't that, isn't that uh, what uh, Obey Your obey Thirst, your thirst. Uh -huh. is uh, Sprite's uh, yeah, that's little clever. tagline? Isaac, thank you for this Altoid, man. It's really helping my voice. It is. <laughs> Button is here in seat four. And the button's going to raise here with king eight off suit. C5 is going to call. And we're heads up. Ace three seven. And C5 called with ace rag in the blind. And he's going to bet right out here with top pair. And Allen folds. <laughs> now, one of the other things that you and I disagree about in Limit Hold'em, Shirley is a big blind defense strategy. Right. Um, heads up, you say that you will defend your blind with almost any two connecting cards or work. Any cards, cards that, that work, work together. Because I saw it earlier, one of the players defended his with jack five, and I wouldn't do that. Right. But if they work together, and, and they don't work together like four deuce. You know, I mean, I, I wouldn't play four deuce, but... And maybe it's any, because any reasonable working together hand, because even if you hit a pair, oh, we got Nicole in the game. This yeah. is a pleasant surprise. She's normally a no-limit... Hold them player. Part of the B team. Love, yes. it when, love it when the B team joins the table. Okay. Okay. Pot is limped around here. Deuce, three, deuce. And uh, seat number seven there has got queen, deuce, offsuit in the big blind. And he checked it from up front. And it looks like uh, seat eight bet there with king eight. Let's see how. And Brian is going to check race. Again. A play that you usually don't see at this level. Usually people always want to wait, wait around. And ace seven of hearts is in there in seat three. Yeah. Wow. Turns a nine. Queen deuce bets. And now Allen folds. Here's the dollar. Here's the dollar. Um, I, I, you know, big blind defense. I, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's because I usually play at higher limits. Mm -hmm. But I always think that, like, 
mistake begets mistake. If I have, if there's a really tough player that's raised in early position there, mm -hmm. I'm probably not going to call with ace three offsuit from the big blind. Yeah, well, I think it, I think our argument really has to do with the games that we play, like you said, and higher limits. And I do play higher limits, like you do, but I play them online. And when I'm doing that, I'm playing six handed. And right. You have to do that. You can't. Well, yeah, six handed. You know, you're right. So, yeah. and when right. I'm playing full tables here. Um, limit. I'm playing smaller. I'm playing the eight sixteen and six twelve. And I just think that like bege you know, mistake begets mistake. Say you call a six seven of clubs, mm -hmm. and you flop, and the flop comes king seven three, mm -hmm. and the guy has ace king. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, you're going to stick have around. Have ace king, yeah, right. king jack. Or he could have pocket, you know, pocket jacks. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, you can say that you mm -hmm. might outplay the guy, but it's just difficult against tougher competition. Right. At it's not even levels. necessarily outplay. I mean, if you're if you're capable of get, letting the hand go. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you go into check call modes because you made a pair, then, yeah, it's, it's not going to be worth it for you. Now, look at this. Nicole's going to stick around here. She posted from behind with a 7. And Kevin's bet king-queen on the flop. Nicole called. And now Nicole's going to get rid of it. And Nicole's a really smart player. I'm really impressed with her play. Well, have you seen her play limit? I haven't seen her play limit, but I like her no limit play. Yes, yeah, she's, she's yeah. a good no limit player. And there's a buzz going in. Uh, I've never seen her do anything stupid at the table like, with me playing with her mm -hmm. and watching her play. Right. Well, I mean, limit and no limit is a totally different game, so we'll have to see how you know she does here. Right. We've got a race here with seat six. He's got king jack off suit. And... Small blind has called here. He, with queen jack, jack. offsuit. And I'm going to get to this in a little second here, too. The flop comes ace, four, eight. King jack is going to bet. And Blake is going to fold. Now, that is definitely a hand that I am more likely to three bet there, surely. I agree. Or fold. I thought the same thing. <laughs> you either take control of the hand there. Right. Or you fold there in the small With position line. And, yeah. and get right. Again, against a tough player, though, I have no problem laying down queen jack in the small blind. Even to a late position raiser, I have no problem really laying down king jack. I mean, if I think the guys want to steal, I'm probably going to three bet mm -hmm. there in the small blind with that hand. Button is going to raise here with eight, five of diamonds. And C2 is going to call. In the blind, he's got King Jack offsuit. Ace, 10, 8 with a couple of hearts. And we've got a bet here by Blake. Turn is a five of clubs. Wow, and uh, George's check called here with King Jack all the way. And the river's a queen, and he's hit the gut shot, and now he's going to bet. And Blake had two pair on the turn. Yeah, he's going to get called. Blake had two pair on the turn. George hits it, takes it down. Wave to your sister. Thank you. <laughs> I did it again. Called it all the way there with King Jack and took it down there on the river. You know, there's an interesting article in um, Card Player, I forget who wrote it, talking about what hands you should, in small, small blind defense, what hands you should three bet and what hands you should fold. From the small blind? From the small blind. And uh -huh. they were talking about against very tight players, you should fold the hands such as king jack and king ten because you're probably going to be dominated. Mm -hmm. Whereas you should three bet small pocket pairs hmm. and take control of the hand because they're going to fold if they miss the flop. Whereas against loose aggressive players, the other way around, mm -hmm. you might fold small pocket pairs mm -hmm. but three bet hands where you think you might have them dominated, like a king jack, yes, king ten, something and like that. Four-way action here. He's limped around. Jack do six. Because remember, if you're going to three bet with pocket threes or pocket fours in the small blind, and that guy's going to call you on two streets, regardless of what he has, you're never going to be a huge favorite there when you see four cards, right? Right. Now we have a bet here by seat three and a raise. They'll have jacks. By Brian, yeah, look at that. Jack nine, jack nine, jack seven. Turns a king. Check, check. And Brian's going to bet with a jack nine here again. And Alan's going to call. 
This is pretty straightforward here. And Kevin calls. And this is probably going to get checked down, I would imagine, here. Three on the river. I wouldn't think that Jack Nine would be comfortable with his kicker. With, well, no. Let's see. I think he'll say good, yeah. Enough, yeah, yeah. good, en good enough to show down, not good enough to bet. Right. Jack with the nine. And a lot of times you bet the turn. Some, I mean, sometimes I might, you know, sometimes I might bet. Some, let's say if I raise the pocket queens and the flop came king seven deuce. Mm -hmm. Somebody bet into me. Mm -hmm. I might raise there with pocket queens uh -huh. and bet the turn as well and then get a free showdown on the river, even though I might think I'll beat, you know, um, just because there's a chance the guy might be betting into me with a draw. So sometimes you bet the turn in order to get a free showdown. And in that case, that guy didn't have top pair. <laughs> and we got a new player coming into the game. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anything you say, sir. We're going with you. Button is moving over to their seat, too. Button's over there in seat two. Can I ask you, can we have our cake and eat it too? Got so we just got word that your friend got knocked out of the tournament. I was yeah. saying that I hope that he didn't get, get knocked out of the tournament. He, he might come and sit down here. Yeah. You got a raise here, it looks like. Actually, kind of my friend too, huh? Yeah, you guys know each other from, from emails. The poker games. Poker, yeah. Raise here by seat number seven with king queen. And we're going to see multi multi way action here, five way action, ninety to eighty dollar pot, king queen the original razor, ace eight five and look at this Allen's flop top and bottom. Once again he bets right into it. And look at this seat five is going to raise. He's got a set of eights. Wow, again, usually you don't Ooh, see this type of play. A lot of, of sets, yeah. yeah. Usually you don't see this type of play at the lower levels. Let's see if Alan three bets. <laughs> He's going to three bet. Now, this is a situation here, if I was Kevin, where I would just call and raise here on the turn. Let's just see what he does. You would, even with two clubs out there? I, I think so. And he just calls. Actually, he, he, he capped it. He did cap it. Capped it with the ace. Yeah, I think I would cap it with the clubs. Turn is a 10. Remember, your head's up, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we got a check call here by Alan. Right. And the river is a club. Well, Kevin shut down. Yes, oh, wow. Did. I can't believe they you shut put down. Him on the flush. Yeah, put him on the flush. Yeah. I got to be honest with you. I'm not really scared when the third flush comes to me when I've got not a big normally, hand yeah. and limit hold him when it gets checked to me. Well, on the river, if someone was in there for a club draw and they hit their club draw, they're going to bet out. Usually, yeah. Yeah. And the other thing, too, about limit is you can bet your mediocre hands for value. Mm -hmm. Because if you get check raised, it's just one extra bet. Right. It's not like no limit where you're, where you're exposing your entire stack to the hand, you know? Mm -hmm. There's our new player, Rich, in seat nine. Now, Rich is your friend, right? Yeah, he's a friend from New York. Yeah. Um, he actually posts on 2 Plus 2 also. Oh, really? Yeah, on here it's, um, I be believe it's NY Rocket Man. So he's a two plus tour, huh? Yes, but not you know not like some of these other two plus tours, <laughs> you know. He probably has a newbie title or something Five like players. that. Now we have a raise here by seat seven, and we got four callers, so we got five-way action. Nobody has a jack. Seat seven raised with ace queen, and Blake is going to bet here with seven nine. Douglas calls with a gut shot. George calls with pocket, pocket fours. fours. How do you call a pocket fours there? Look at that, Brian, he smart, wisely checked folds there with the ace-queen. And look at this, Blake bets blind again. Turn is a jack. Blake loves to bet blind. Now, Douglas, he's got a straight draw here, surely, but if his straight comes, it's no good. There's right. Three, there's three of a kind on board. Jack, jack, nine, jack on board here. So he needs to hit a king for his hand. Yeah. And the river's a deuce, and Blake bets blind again. That betting, betting blind is going to get him in trouble. No, I agree with you. But, I mean, Douglas, was he, and he's going to call with king high. He calls it down with king high. And the nine is good. 
Seven, My goodness. I just moved over here to see four. Sometimes it's just my killer. heart, Shirley. My heart. <laughs> so those are the people at home can see. It hurts. Sometimes I feel like I need a defibrillator in here. Thank you. We got a raise here by C. Dade. He's got Ace King. He says he hasn't even looked at his cards, but he has Ace King. And he's going to get a couple people to call. Looks like it's going to be five way action here again. Did he really not look at his cards? I don't know. He's got Ace King. Yes. So if he didn't look at his cards, that, that's really something. Queen, Queen, Seven. And no one has a pair. Ace King is good. And he's going to bet. He's going to bet with Ace King. Now, see, this is the difference between this game and 2040. Normally, against the same player, somebody's not going to make that call with Ace 10. Because I would still bet this flop with Ace King. Because yeah. it's a paired board. You know what we say about paired boards? It might right. miss everyone. Ace right. King might still be good. Mm -hmm. But then you wonder what is this guy called with over there in seat one? And he called again with Ace 10. And here we go to the river. The river's three. Blake checks, and Douglas and checks, and Ace King's good. Wow, So he was strictly calling to hit his, hit his hand. I think that he, maybe I mean, he thought that his Ace high was good. I mean, instead of calling to try to take the pot down. Unbelievable. Got an email here from Thomas Dorn from Germany. It says, I'm watching the show, and I really enjoy it. You three do such a great job commentating and discussing the hands. Plus, it's really interesting oh, to see you. every hand. Not just 10 out of 200. Well, that's true. And uh, he said one comment about those small pairs. I think if you got position on a razor and get a couple of callers, it's worth trying to hit a set because there's huge implied odds and it's such a no-brainer to play post-flop. Greetings, thanks. Thomas, he says, P.S. I won't send you beer. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> And we got uh, a raise here by did you C Did you read that bottom part? I won't send you beer. What's that? Did you ask for beer? Well, I always have. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, King 7, Brian there in seat 7 has got the best hand. But Blake, he's going to bet here with Jack 10. And how is, is Kevin going to call with Queen 10 here? This is unbelievable. It looks, it looks, like, it looks like Brian's going to check raise here with King 7. Blake calls. And now Kevin folds. So Blake's going to need to hit a jack or a 10 here. Turns an ace. Now there's a case right there where sometimes, surely, the ace appears on the turn. And if the guy doesn't look scared of it, if Brian bets into me after check raising the flop, and an ace might be an exception because he could have something like ace seven, mm -hmm. you might raise with something like king queen on the turn. Just for the, the fact that you might, you might hope the guy folds, that he had check raised with a lone seven like he did with king seven there. And then if you don't hit anything, check it down on the river. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. I don't know. I don't know. I think we'll be... M you can explain it to me later. Because I think if an ace comes and someone still fires, like, without thinking twice about it, that usually means that they have a huge hand, like a set or something like that. Well, that's, well, that's true, too, especially with an ace. Mm -hmm. Or they could have two pair, but right. I, you know I've made that raise on the turn with nothing, mm -hmm. you know, just as a pure bluff, and then I'm gonna get a free kind of a free card. I, I mean, I get a yeah, free showdown at the right. end, you know. It's almost like a semi bluff with over cards or with mm -hmm. a hand that I know isn't good right now, but hopefully might will be good. Wow, look at this! Kevin raised and Blake three bet, and Douglas is in there for three bets. Cole with Jackie, George calls with Ace five suited three bets, four way action. 10, 8, 7 here. And it uh, looks like Jack 8 has the best hand. And Douglas is going to bet right here. George calls with East 5. Wow. Kevin calls with overs. We've seen a lot of that tonight, and you're actually still surprised. Turns another 7. Douglas' hands is still good. He's still going to bet. And how far are these guys just going to continue to call down with over cards? Well, Kevin has a, a gut shot there with it. There's Carlos in the background. 
Did you see him? I, I yeah. didn't see him. Donna, grab Carlos. Two player. And the river's a queen. And Kevin called it down all the way. And Douglas bets again. Yeah. And he folds. Oh, there he is. There he is. So I think Carlos is going to come into the game for Nicole when she plays through her blind. Right, when it gets to your blind. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. I'm feeling until someone else comes and someone has come. Getting word that Carlos's nickname is short I, although I, I never heard that before. And I wouldn't repeat that. <laughs> 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 I would be again, volunteering. Did he, did he name volunteering himself that? that? Did he name that himself that? that, that that's funny. <laughs> here we go. We have a big hand here with Jax. Uh, yeah, pocket Jax here for seat six. Seat six. Look at the seat five's going to raise with Ace Jack, and let's see if the Boston Red Sox guy's going to three bat. No, he just did. He just call. He did just call. Just called. Now that's a hand I definitely think I would have three bet with all these players playing so loose on the table, surely. I mean, I guess he's just playing out to try to get a set here. Six way action. Six, seven, seven, and Blake's got ace seven in seat eight. Trip sevens, and George has a flush draw. Didn't George have ace five last hand, ace five of hearts? Maybe. I think it was. Now here we go. Now we get a raise here by the over pair, a bet. And Blake is going to play it slow. He's just going to—he's playing it slow with the ace seven. Douglas have, has a straight draw. Yep. So we still got four-way so action. This is the time not to slow play. Turns a nine, and now Douglas picks got up a pair. A pair and a straight draw. But now look at this. Blake now bets into the turn. So he check called two bets, and now he bets into the turn. And boy, what do you do with jacks here? I mean, you've got all these people calling. The board is draw heavy. Mm -hmm. He's going to call. I mean, I think no one's really shown a lot of strength here. You don't necessarily yeah, give somebody credit for a seven. Yeah, but you would think that somebody has to have a seven with all those calls. And the river's a six, but no one's made the check raise on the turn. <laughs> no one really played the flop strongly. But let's see. I think Blake has bet the river here again. And look at this. Douglas calls with eight, nine. George didn't make it. And again, I mean, with that pot being so big And an overhaul with Jack. Well, I, I don't think I really blame him there. I mean, the way that the hand was played out, remember, Blake check called two bets on the flop, and then he bet into the turn. Now, that mm -hmm. does show strength, but again, I mean, at this level, you never know. Uh, I mean, I don't think right. that that was an odd. I mean, uh, and the yeah, other thing it wasn't, too, no, it wasn't definitely not. Horrible. Well, the other thing, that, that too, is like what people say, well, how does he overcall the guy? Well, you can say that, but I make overcalls when I know I have the guy in between beat, and he didn't yes. have the guy in between yes, beat. that's true. You know? Right. So... Donna, I'm going to leave at the big line. Okay. Button is in seat eight. There you go. Got a limp here. Now look at this. Nicole, it's interesting. She's limped in here with pocket threes. Now normally I bet she wouldn't do that. And usually in limit hold'em I don't do that. But on a table like this, Shirley, mm -hmm. maybe I would. Would like you gets, what? I'm sorry. She I limps in an early mid position with pocket three. It's because okay. she's got six way action without a race. Okay. I mean, it's not necessarily a she, real aggressive table. She limped in early mid position with pocket threes, and she got six way action without a raise, exactly mm -hmm. what you want with a small pocket pair. Wow, though, she's check called the flop here. I'm not sure about that. But does she still have the best hand? Turns a queen. Now she doesn't. But she did on the flop. You're right about she that. She did on the flop. That's incredible. King Look at Douglas shake King a little bit. It's shaking. And, it, and uh, it gets checked around to the button. And now Douglas is going to check raise. I was a little surprised there to see Nicole call the flop there with pocket threes. And the river's a six. And now Kevin's made a pair of sixes. Excuse me, uh, that's Blake. You know, we never had Blake's cards up there. He has ace-six. Blake has ace-six, and he hit two pair there. 
Douglas check raised the turn. I was wondering how would the play call with King High, but we, we put his cards down. He, he called with top pair and he hit the river two pair and mm -hmm. he beat Douglas's two pair. And he takes it down with ace six. Yes, ace six. Wow. Have you read Harrington's books? I have not. I, I heard they were wonderful. Really? Yeah. Amazing. I haven't read them yet. Does he address cash games in his books? I'm not I'm not sure. I haven't read them. But I just heard that they're unbelievable. Unbelievable. And again, this has really turned into textbook small stakes holding game. Very, very loose passive now. Five or six way action, seeing the flop for without a raise. Queen five deuce here, rainbow. Now I might be limping in, Shirley, with six, seven, seven, eight of diamonds from up front. No free ride. From up front? Out of from position? Up, from up front, and this the way this table's playing, hmm. I think I might be limping in with any pocket pair and any suited connector, say, above seven high. Three-way three action here. Turns a jack. I believe Brian bet on the flop. Or was it Blake? I think it was Blake with the open-ended straight draw. Free ride. And it gets, he takes the card. And the river's a four. And it looks like it King Jack. Oh, excuse no, me. Blake's the got the clubs. three of clubs in his hand. Let's see if I got a club. Well, he has a club, but I guarantee he's, he's not going to bet yeah, here on the river. Yeah, he's going to check it. I have the three. That's there it good. Is. Yep. He just Save got done stacking up his other one. Yep. Send it. From the last pot. Well, it's interesting. I had thought that Brian had been playing well, but I think he called the flop there. Five deuce queen with two clubs with a red king jack. Again, you got to figure out what do you call. I think most for. of them have really lost their mind. In this game, I'm <laughs> well, you. Okay, that too. <laughs> but me and you, I'm sitting here thinking about we play really different. Well, I mean that was we knew that a long time ago, I guess, huh? But um, you know, you're talking about with all this action and with all this action. I usually just tend to play like really strong hands. Well, yeah, but the thing is, is that you're getting the implied playing, odds on your drawing you getting, hands now. Right, but and the like, implied odds aren't anything near like they would be in no limit. No, they're not. So, but but still though, like you have I to mean, figure out what you need. I mean, I just play my really strong hands, and then like in tight, really tight games, that's when I'll open, up, you know, open up my games and try to run over the table. Well, look at this. Brian's got pocket kings. I believe he did. He raised preflop there in seat seven. Seven six deuce, and Douglas has hit bottom set. And Brian didn't bet the flop. The turn is an eight. And Douglas didn't bet with his set on the flop. Wow. And now Blake bets with an open-ended straight draw, and Douglas raises. And now the question for Brian is, can he get away from Kings here? He does. He does. He folds. And Blake is drawing live. He can catch a five or a ten to win here. That's something that you don't really see at these limits. And he makes a call. People getting rid of kings. Yep. Being able to lay down. And the river is a four. That only it's gives, a third spade. Yeah, it only gives Blake a pair of fours. Check my baby flush. Okay, and Blake says, check my baby flush. And Douglas says, no, I don't yeah, believe you. I it. bet. Because Blake wants to see this hand in a showdown. But there's no way he can think the pair of fours is good. And he folds. No, the point I'm trying to make is... You obviously do not have implied odds like you do no limit, mm -hmm. but you do as far as how much money you can make in a pot if you figure out the odds, uh -huh. you know, on each street. The implied mm -hmm. odds are whatever the cap is on each street. So what I'm saying is, is that the reason why I make that call with small pocket pairs mm -hmm. to maybe a raised pot with three or four people in is that in this mm -hmm. game, if I think that I can make a pot that's at least $150 mm -hmm. by making a $16 call mm -hmm. with pocket fours, well, then it's worth it for me. Okay. Because I'm getting the implied odds to do that. Okay. Um, like I said, I might. I, I'll open up my game as far as playing suited aces in games like these. Well, I think I mean, you might do that too, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily mind limping in an early position here with ace five suited. Right. Whereas in a tighter or stronger game, I wouldn't do that. When playing it. Right. Ten right. four ten. Nicole's going to lead here with the top pair. Brian's going to flush draw over there in seat Thank seven. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He calls. Yeah, oh, he's going to race. Did he race? He race with the diamonds. Nicole calls. Here we go to the turn. Turns an ace. 
Jackson. Now, let's see if Brian bets here. I actually like the bet, and I'll tell you why here in a second. But Nicole makes the call. Nicole is going to make the call. And here we go to the river. And the river's a diamond, and Brian made it. And I assume that Brian's going to bet again here with the flush. And Nicole is going to fold. Now, the reason why I like the bet there on the turn, it might sometimes put some you know, players in a tough spot, some tight players in a tough mm -hmm. spot on the turn. Because if Nicole thinks, well, the guy is either raising me with a higher 10, mm -hmm. a 4, or a diamond draw, when you think that somebody might be on a diamond draw, well, the ace sometimes is a scary have, card right. because you might have the they nut diamond draw. They might have the draw. ace of diamonds. Yeah. Okay, so seat five left, and we have Carlos yep. coming into his. Carlos in seat five. Brian's going to raise here with King Jack off suit. Carlos actually played on the show. Carlos actually played on the show about nine months ago with me uh, on a, in a No Limit game. When well, you were in the game, or you yeah. were doing the commentary? Yeah. Here we go. Limped or ex actually, uh, Brian raised there with King Jack. And Douglas picks up uh, ace five of clubs. Flop comes six five four. Brian bets and Douglas calls. The turn's a seven. One liner to a straight now. Brian's gonna bet again with the red king jack. Douglas is gonna call. Brian's gonna need to spike a king or a jack here on the river. And the river's a queen. And it's just gonna get checked down. And Douglas is gonna take it down there with ace five. There it is. Now, I still don't necessarily like calling raises with suited connectors, and I usually never do it in a stronger game because your implied odds need to be much, much higher mm -hmm. with a suited connector than it does with a pocket pair because you have chances of hitting a hand with a suited connector is much less than the chances of hitting a set, say, two pair. Right. Or picking up, you know, a hand that's going to complete a draw. Mm -hmm. So that's why it sometimes is, it's not even valuable to call a raise with a suited connector. I mean, you might say if I'm feeling really lucky, I might call nine, ten of clubs, you know, with six-way right. action to a double-sized bet on the button. It's all, you know, it all depends on the game and your position right. and stuff like that. But normally I'm not going to make those calls. But with pocket pairs, I do. Three-way action. Carlos raised here with ace rag, and he's picked up an ace. He's going to bet, and Ryan raises. And now where's the button on this hand? So Carlos actually raised out of the small blind because there was just one limper out in the field. The turn's a 10. And let's see. Now, Carlos has checked, and what can he beat right here? I wouldn't be surprised if he folds. He actually has the best hand, or would this probably go chop-chop, right? But if he put the guy in a straight draw or a club draw, it got there, and he can't and beat two pair. Well, and he can't really beat, beat an ace. Right. Besides ace-deuce, the one that, that his opponent has, unless another high card comes and he chop. And I think the reason why Carlos raised there in the small blind, again, you know, why did he raise with ace four in the small blind? There was one limper out in the field. Mm -hmm. Now, you look down with any ace in the small blind, mm -hmm. there's a fairly tight player in seat six in the big blind. That's a move that I might make sometimes with right. any ace. I might raise, drive the guy out. I think I have the best hand you against the weak limper You probably have the best hand against the, the limper. Um, and it just happened to be that he was out of position and got outplayed mm -hmm. throughout the hand there. But again, when you look back at the hand, what can he really beat? And I think you're probably going to win long-term money there by making those folds with ace four in that spot. Right. Button has moved over there to Carlos in seat five. And Allen's going to limp in here with King Rag suited. And here we go. Limped around in the blinds. Ace, five, six, rainbow. Brian's going to come out and bet here with a pair. And it looks like he's going to take it down. Look at Blake. I think he's up a lot of money. That's Blake's seat eight, yeah. 
each rack of green, it's of 200. course, right, is a hundred chips. Right. So it's two hundred dollars. So he's got eight hundred dollars. Change. Yeah. A stack of chips is twenty chips. A rack of chips is a hundred chips. So, rack of greens is two hundred. There we go. You were talking about it. Now we know. Yeah. There you go. Blake's There's got about eight hundred. Blake has the most chips on the table. Yep. George is still doing well, and Douglas is actually losing quite a bit of his money. See, one. I guess Carlos has just started with a rack. Right. That's normally what I do. What do you? Well, I get it to, in a 4-8 chip structured game. I mean, always it doesn't matter. You always can go back into your pocket. Right. I mean, I always have more cash in my pocket if I get down to like a half, I don't, half a rack. I, I personally I don't, don't think that in a 4-8 chip structured game that a rack is really enough. I mean, you can lose that quickly. Because I used to buy in for a rack in a 20-40 game. Now I buy in for about eight or $900 just because... It can go too quickly. Mm -hmm. Four eight is a big game. I mean, in terms of a lot of uh, chips chip in play. Structure. Yes. Three way action here, or heads up. Excuse me. George, George flops, flops a set. set. And now George we know had Douglas raised isn't going to go anywhere. He says two overs and a gut shot. Yeah. He really only has four outs. The nine. Turns a deuce. George is going to bet again. It looks like Douglas is going to call again. And again, we say in a race plot, you might have odds to take one off for a gut shot. And the river's he a hits nine. It. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. And he bets. And George just George, calls. He only called. I was going to say, I probably would have popped it up one time on the river. Well, actually, no, it is, it is uh, for, you know, anyone with just a six would have a straight there. So oh, that's maybe right. Not. That's maybe right. Maybe not. Yeah. Um. You know, sometimes you have odds to take it off for the gut shot for a half, you know, a small bet on the flop. But once it gets to the big bet, mm -hmm. do you really want to try to spike like one out of 11, basically? Well, I you mean, know? he didn't know that his 10 or a jack wasn't good. I mean, that makes it a little bit better. No, I if know. he thought a 9, 10 or jack was going to give him the best hand. But, I mean, that's going with the theory that you're always putting the razor on two high cards, not mm -hmm. necessarily right. a hand already. Button moves over here to seat seven. We've got a raise here by seat six. Looks like a little bit of a steal raise. Deuce five. And Douglas calls in the blind with eight four. You know Douglas is going to stick around with the open-ended straight draw. Yeah. Well, especially now that he's hit it. Oh, no, he hasn't. He hit a pair of fours. No. Nope. Well, Ryan's going to bet mean? again. Ryan is now open-ended. And Douglas calls. And here we go to the river. The river's a queen, and Douglas with a pair of fours is good. Let's see if Ryan's just going to give up or if he's going to try to bet it here one more time. Well, he knows he needs to bet to win it. Let's see if Douglas and we calls saw him Douglas Oh, he's going to fold. Nothing before. Yeah. He's going to fold. Good he bet there by uh, by Ryan at the end. Obviously, he needed to bet to win it. And he did bet. And the button moves over here to seat nine. Seat six there, Ryan mixing up his game a little bit. He had played pretty tight. Carlos is going to bring this one in for a raise in third position. King 10 off suit. Actions over the small blind. He's going to three bet. We can't see what he has yet. He has aces. Well, Carlos is in a world of hurt. King 10 against aces. Queen 9-3. Now, Carlos has a gut shot. Carlos is going to take one off to try to hit that jack. Turns a deuce. And I would imagine he's finished. He's probably going to fold now. And there you go. That's a great, good example of playing the way you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. well, both of us know that you know he's reasonable. Right. What was his hand? Oh, it wasn't the 10 that gave him the, the no, gut shot. The no. 10 was the river card. 
the other thing too, what you gotta figure out about gut shots. You basically have a one in eleven to a one in twelve chance of hitting. So you're looking at you got four outs. So you're looking at you know, if you're looking at implied odds, you'd like to make eleven or twelve times that bet size on the flop. Mm -hmm. So if the bet size on the flop is eight dollars, you wanna win a hundred dollars more if you can make that call, or a hundred dollars in the pot. And usually if you've got against a guy with a big hand there, if you do, now you you can raise on the turn, you make that big bat, and right. sometimes it, you know, it, it, it makes it worth it. Especially in multi-way pots. I take one off for the gut shot on the small bet round. Okay, I thought I could predict what he does, but he's in here with ace eight. Ace nine nine. He has the best hand. Checked around. Checked around. Turns a three. Wow, he played ace eight off suit. From That's up what front, I'm saying. Huh? Uh huh. He's bet. And Douglas is going to call with a pair of threes. Let's see if he puts a value bet here on the end. And the river's an eight. That's of no consequence though, because oh. he still plays aces and nines with an eight. And Douglas also has a no consequence two pair there with three eight. He's got eights and nines, but the aces and nines are going to win. Of course, in, in Texas Hold'em, you play the best five cards in any combination. You know, it's funny. I have some friends that visit me here. And, uh, you know, when we were younger, we didn't really start. We never really played poker together. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't really seriously start playing poker until I moved to L.A. about, you know, several years back. And I was playing on, online in college and live in college. So I really don't know how my friends play. And it's always fun to go back for Christmas like I will mm -hmm. this time and really see the ones that say that they play well, how they really play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because I always have every right to well, be Well, what critic. do you think? Yeah, what do you think about your other friend, how he plays? Um, uh, Albert? Yes. Oh, I, I, I hammered him when he was on the show earlier. about. Oh, really? Crap. Oh, yeah. He well, like, he might have. Yeah. He played like total crap. <laughs> he well, he's had eight months to improve his game. Yeah. If we got him back on the show, it might not, not be so bad. Now, we had a raise here. And we don't know who it was, but we got five-way action with a double bet in here. Eight, eight, seven on the flop. Looks like Carlos has the best hand with pocket sixes. And he's going to bet right away. Ryan's going to call. Nicole fold. Nicole's going to fold there. She's got overcards and a gut shot, but the board is paired. And we're heads up, it looks like. Turns a seven. Oh, now Carlos' hands get counterfeited. And he's going to bet here again. And Ryan has the best hand with ace high here. And Ryan's going to call. The problem here is that that's level. I mean, do you fire one more time, the guy's going to call with an ace, right? River's a well, nine. I think if he called on the turn, that means yeah. he had already put it in his head he was going to call on the river. Yep, and Carlos plays the board. Ryan takes it down there with ace queen. Win. Can I read that post, Shirley? You can read it, but I don't know the <laughs> answer to it yet. I haven't talked to her today. CW Siggy on 2 plus 2 writes, Haha, full tilt chat now with Mattisau. Apparently he tried to hit on genocide. We need confirmation of this from Shirley. Can you find that out? I, the wonderful world I'm of sure poker gossip. <laughs> Is genocide the type of woman that would go out with Massau? <laughs> uh -huh. She likes prison boys. <laughs> Seat six is going to raise here. Jack nine of clubs here under the gun. And seat one calls. And we are heads up. Ace five nine, couple spades. Check, check. Turns a deuce. Well, oh, Ryan didn't bet out there on a pair. No. And he probably missed a call that Douglas would have made because Douglas has a draw. He, right, he has a gut shot there. Well, now he's not going to call the turn. And he takes it down. So 
So is this your least favorite poker game? Are you talking to me? Least favorite to... Limit hold'em. Um... <laughs> I was just throwing that out there. Well, I, yeah, I know. I guess you are talking to me. Uh, Duh. Uh, <laughs> All right. Sometimes I'm not the brightest uh, in the bunch, okay? Um, yes. Yes. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> stud is. But, see, we don't really play stud in California much, you know? But of, like, Omaha, no limit, limit. Yes, it's my least favorite. And Crazy Pineapple, what a stupid game that is. Well, Alan raised here with King-9, and Douglas called Queen-10. 6-6-5 on the flop. Alan's going to bet. And Douglas folds. Alan you like takes Crazy it down. Pineapple? I've Similar never played it. Similar to Omaha, but it's enough to drive me nuts. Never played it. The thing with stud with me is, obviously, I play stud high-low. <laughs> I don't mind that game. But I don't have a great, like, memory. So stud high, I I've really never learned that game, and I have no desire to learn it. And I'm pretty open to different games, but I have it's absolutely no desire to learn stud right. high. Stud, it's just, it moves so slowly, you know. It's just, yeah. you really have to have a lot of patience. As far as memorizing cards, like when I'm playing Jin Rummy, you know, I can remember cards that people pick up from the, from the deck like you wouldn't believe. But when it comes to stud, you know, I have a lot of... It's, it's a lot harder for me. Maybe because they're not sitting in front of you for as long, you know, if the person mucks right away, but their, they're, you know, up card was only exposed for, you know, four seconds. Well, six-way action here limped around. <coughs> Six, seven, eight with a couple of hearts. Brian has a heart draw. George, has, George, George yeah. has two pair. And he bets. He's played it pretty straightforward. He bets with top two pair. And Nicole's going to raise with ace eight. Now, that should drive Carlos out with 6-4, with the black 6-4. He folds. Brian's probably going to call here with the heart draw. He does. And let's see if George 3 bets. Is Brian still in the hand? Yes, he is. Well, he's got the heart draw. Yeah, I know, but... And George just called. I didn't see him act on his hand. Turns a queen. This is an interesting spot. And uh, Nicole's going to bet again. If I was George and I played it this way... Sometimes people will wait for a safe card to come on the turn. And that's a pretty safe high blank card. If I was George, I might have bet right in. Or check raised here. Well, he Because obviously called. there's a bunch of cards that are going to hurt you on the turn. This mm -hmm. big straight draw, big flush draw out there. But he just calls. And the river's a queen. That gives and Nicole now the Nicole has hand. the best hand. And she's going to bet here again. Oh. And again, I think that George played it a little bit passively. Yeah, you got me on a river. Now, the thing about Nicole is because she's so solid. If you actually were to three bet her on the flop and bet into the turn, she probably would have gotten her out of the hand on the turn. I think. She had no yeah. other draw. She had ace eight of clubs. All right. she had was top pair. Right. On the turn, she doesn't even have top pair now. She can't beat two pair, which you kind of have to put somebody on who three bet the flop as a minimum, right? Right. S you know, eight, seven, six there. We have about 15 minutes left in the show. No, we don't. 45 minutes left in the show, <laughs> excuse me. I was thinking, wow, that went fast. <laughs> Couple limpers here. Limped around. Limped around. Four, four players. Yep. Ace, queen, king. Seat seven is going to bet here. Brian with top pair. And seat one's going to call here with jack six, surely. Jason for a gut shot. Not like that gut shot if it came wouldn't be obvious, right? Turns yeah. an eight. Like you're going to get paid on that one. Brian bets again. Douglas calls again. And here we go to the river. And the river's another ace. And Brian's going to bet, it looks like, once again. And Douglas folds. We well, you know the person that started this thread way back when in February, Kev Math, I need to hire him as my agent. <laughs> 
He says, since Bart mentioned that he did some announcing part of the time during this event, Battle of Champions 2 debuts tomorrow night on the Travel Channel. At the final table is Phil Locke, Antonio, Hoyt Corkins, Noli Francisco, Mel Judah, and David... Benamine. Benamine. And yes, check that out. Because I'm on there with Linda Johnson again. Mm -hmm. When I was doing the... Uh, I did that one and I did Ladies Night, which is already You know, aired. I have the Ladies recorded. I still haven't watched it. Really? Yeah. I'm still oh, to get through wow. The series. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Got a limp here by seat one. And we're going to see a limper and the blinds. Here we go to the flop. Ace King Deuce. No one really has anything here. Turns a queen. Got How is Rich shots. involved in this hand? Oh, He's in the blind. Blind, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we haven't seen Rich play one hand yet, have we? No, well, he played one hand earlier when he was in the big blind and he had a suited ace nine and it was raised and there were, I think, five people in the pot. No, I was about to say. You know, it's funny it. that day that they, they filmed Battle of Champions 2. Uh huh. Antonio and Phil Locke were actually playing in the 500 game. Oh, really? Fun to watch them. I thought we were going to get Phil Lack over here to play in it one time. You know, I talked he to him a couple talks, of times. He yeah, said that he, he loves it. He always talks about it. Antonio actually came in the booth with me for a couple minutes. Oh, he did. Go to Vegas and Paris. Most of Bart's friends stink at poker. <laughs> yeah, Russ McGinley. I've noticed that most of Bart's friends stink at poker. I think Bart may be feeding them bad advice so he can clean up in the home games. You're on to me, Russ. But Carlos did not call with King Ten. He raised with he King Ten. He did raise with it. Yeah. But he did play Ace Eight in early position. Yeah, that was, that was very questionable. Offsuit. Yuck. Well, he's going to limp in. He's going to open limp here with four or five of clubs. <laughs> Speaking of, now you See, said you would do this. No, well, no, and not loose, not if there was nobody out. Yeah, but, but look, the first three people have folded here. Right. I mean, this is a raise if I think I can outplay everyone hand or a fold. I'm not limping to try to get implied odds. Because you only got three-way action here. And Brian raised with jack eight. Flop comes ace, seven, three. Carlos has got a gut shot to the six. He has a double gutter. Ah, look at that. You're right. Does he notice it? Because I didn't. <laughs> He's got a wheel draw and a straight draw to the six. If I saw it, he sees it, I'm sure. He also has backdoor clubs. Here we go to the turn. Turn is an eight. That's no help. But Douglas has hit two pair now. And Brian's hit a pair. Brian bets. And let's see if Douglas is going to raise. And he is going to raise. Did he say raise? Yes. So now Carlos is facing a double size big bet. With the double gutter, he's got eight outs. In essence, which is almost the same as an open ender, but right. I don't. I don't know. We have to, do? Well, it was three-way action. It was a you know there were six big bets on the on the hand. Um, it was raised pre-flop. It was bet on the flop. But it was raised pre-flop. It was actually three big bets on the flop. Oh, was. You know, times a double, and he's trying to figure out the odds here. He says it's a gun shy fold. There's a couple of hearts out there. Yeah, I think only, I would fold. Well, the only thing that you, you could say, though, like not doing the math out of my head quick enough, is that Douglas has shown a lot of strength. If you were to hit your straight here, you would get at least one more double-sized bet in here. Mm -hmm. And the river's an eight, and Douglas fills up. And Douglas is going to bet again. And, of course, you definitely... And look at this, though. Brian, he's hit trip eights, and he's thinking about raising Douglas check raised the turn. He filled up on the river, but Brian's got trip eights now. He says it'll just call. And that's a wise, smooth call. And uh, Brian folds. Or Brian mucks, and Douglas is going to take it down there with the eight. Well, you've got six, you've got six small bets. Or, or three big bets on the flop. Then you've got, you know, another bet and a half mm -hmm. on the flop. Excuse me. You got 
Three big bets pre-flop, another bet and a half on the flop. So you got 4.5 big bets. Now the turn, you've got a bet over there by seat seven, so that's five and a half, and a double bet. So you need to call two big bets to win seven and a half big bets. There's seven and a half big bets in the pot, and you need to call two big bets. Mm -hmm. So you're getting about three and a half, three and a half to, one. to one. So, and you figure with, say, and you really need to get with one card to come more like five or six to one, right? Well, especially when there was two hearts out there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. unless you... Plus two, if the guy has it's a hard, set, hard you don't even know. It's hard to put somebody on the heart draw because yeah. it did come back door, but... Well, and, and, and again, if someone has two pair, mm -hmm. you know, two of those lower pair, uh -huh. then you might hit your straight and it's no good anyways. You're right. I think it's the right fold with one card to come. And Carlos moved over there to seat two. And look at this. Seat six is raised. And did Rich call? Rich called with ace eight off suit, Shirley. Oh, lordy. Well, maybe he's All playing right. the player. Ryan had raised, you know, with some garbage before. Or maybe he's just getting frustrated. Carlos. No, I don't think so. All right, we got four-way action here. <laughs> Six, five, three, a couple You're spades. You're like, there's no way. And look at this. Allen's hit top two pair, and he bets right into it. Ryan raises, and I think Rich is going to get away from the red ace eight here. He does. I think that was actually a case of boredom right there. See what Alan does here. He's just going to call. Turns a four. Brings a straight out now, there. Now, neither player could like that card. Well, Ryan's going to bet again. He's going to bet the jacks. Oh, let's check to him. Why not? And Alan just calls. And the river's a seven. Chop this one up. Straight plays on the board. And Alan bets. I always do that, too, just in case. Just in case they don't know. Well, it's a third spade, too, so he might represent spades. And look at he this! Must. Ryan mucks! Ryan folds the straight on the board for one bet! Oh, my! It was a third spade on the river, but for one extra bet... My goodness. Just in case. That's him off the chop pot. Yes. I got to tell you, I'm surprised the guy played that hand so passively anyways. He had top two pair. The guy raised you on the flop. Mm -hmm. You're just going to call and check, call a turn? What are you worried about? I mean, if you've got aces or kings, you're ahead anyways, right? Right. Unbelievable. Button moves over here to seat nine. Seat one, excuse me. Seat seven lived in, and seat eight raised with queen jack off suit. Allen's going to call with pocket tens. Four way action. Jack, jack six. Blake, the original razors, hit trip jacks. And he's going to bet. Now, I can't imagine that Allen's not going to get involved with this. He's going to check raise. And here's a time where maybe if you're Blake, you just call here and raise on the turn. And that's what he's going to do. This is what I'm talking about here. Oh, the turn's a 10. We might see three or four bets here yeah. on the turn. Let's see if Alan bets. And i got to think that Blake is probably going to raise. And let's see the three bet by Alan. What a horrible card for Blake on the turn. And there it is. Three bets. Alan's our friend from Canada who's going back tonight. This might be a last hand for him. In a nice, good pot for him well, to win. These are American dollars we're playing with. <laughs> yes. And Alan says, you got ten jack, you win. But he's got pocket tens. River's a three. Alan's going to bet here. Blake calls. Ten's full is going to take it down. He says, nice turn. And he's going to take it down. Well, join us, of course, tomorrow night for Poker Blues Whale Night. We'll be playing 5100 No Limit Hold'em. And uh, from what I heard from some of the players, Shirley, 
Ed Shaughnessyan is going to be taking a break from that game. Yes, I heard that too. Uh, he lost a very, a lot of very money, a lot of money last week. A uh, good amount of money last week. I won't mention the amount. No, I'm not talking won't. about just on the no, show. No, we won't. I'm not talking We're about after. on the show, just total. Right. After they, they yeah. continued to play. So, and, you know, we know that that money is just, you know, pennies in his pocket, but still. A he's, lot of money still a lot of money. Yeah, he's, he's not going to play, so. Yeah. Buttons moved over there to seat two. <laughs> Raise here, seven eight suited here by Carlos on the button. And we're going to see it three ways. It means that I'm playing a hand, so it probably won't. Nine three deuce. Is that it? And Brian is all in. He bets two chips all in. Carlos calls. And Nicole calls. Nicole actually has king five, I believe. Turn is a jack. So Brian hits a pair now. And the river's a four. And it's a dry side pot. Brian has the best hand. Yes. Definitely. Yeah, and he's going to take it down there. It was all in. But you got to love Ed. You know? Comes here for fun, mm -hmm. obviously. He's a very nice and pleasant guy. He's a very nice guy. Button has moved over here to seat three. Queen Jack off suit here for Carlos in the cutoff. Under the gun is going to raise. Pocket fours. Carlos has got Queen Jack off suit. He's going to fold. A lot of people get in trouble with those high Broadway cards, but. And Nicole had 10 9 suited. She folded in the small blind as nobody else was in there. And seat five's in there, but we can't see his cards. Set of fours. Yep. 9 4 8 here. Nicole will do it for him. Looks like he's got 6 9. Six, he has nine top of pair. Heart. Turns a six. He's got two pair now, but Ryan still has a set. And let's see if Stan bets. He has bet. And I think the club has stopped Ryan from raising. He just calls. The river's a deuce. Stan's going to bet again. Ryan's going to call. Set of fours is good there for seat six. And Ryan takes it down. Well, this guy's played pretty unpredictable all night. Two people in the pot. That three. That's three. We have one player not showing his cards. Just bring a little prop with you everywhere you go. Hold it. Hold it. Just have a little easel. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, blow up the cover so it's a big. Cover. Yeah. Now we can see him. So he has seven eight. Hey Blake Betts. Next hand. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we have a raise there from seat eight is pocket tens. That's Blake. That's what I want. All you little guys to get out. Looks like they're all going to get out. And he wins. Uncontested. All right, next hand. Button's going to move over there to seat six. Looks like we got about 25 minutes left in the show. Of course, if you want to email so us, more, more email like us at liveatthebike.com. If you want to follow a thread, line has moved over there to seat six. It's been an interesting limit hold'em game. 816 limit hold'em. And uh, we're going to go into the next hand. Again, we haven't seen Shirley's friend Rich there play much. Looks like Carlos has got suited connector. He's going to bring it in for a raise with 10 9 suited. And the big blind's going to call here with King 8. So we're heads up. Carlos has position, 9-10 of diamonds against king-8. Here we go to the flop, king, queen, six, couple clubs. Blake has hit top pair. Carlos is going to bet. Blake's got the eight of clubs, and he's going to check raise. And I'd imagine that Carlos is probably going to be done with it here. He's got a gut shot to the jack, but he has no club. And he folds. And Blake takes it down. Button has moved over here to seat number eight. Again, tomorrow night, 5,100, no limit hold'em. And I will actually be doing that game with Dave Tuckman. He's going to get a whirl at the Wednesday night game. He usually does the game on Fridays, but Shirley and him are going to be switched up this week. Limped around here, plus the blinds, four-way action. Here we go to the flop. Not a lot of huge hands. King, five, seven. We got a raise here. A bet by seat six and a raise. Excuse me, a bet there by Allen and a raise by Ryan. And Ryan's hit two pair. Allen checks, Ryan bets, and Allen's going to fold. Hey, we got an email here from uh, Nikolai mm -hmm. Vorland. Everyone here always picking up on our mistakes. He said, Bart, you said if someone had two pair or a set on that hand where Carlos had the double gutter, uh -huh. Your straight might not be good if you hit it. Right. Well, of course, I would be wrong if I made that comment, right? Cause yeah. Well, I caught that one. You did? <laughs> but you didn't one, say anything. I was the one at the time, so I was going to let you slide. Oh. <laughs> and then someone corrected it. I see. Well, that's true. But there were two hearts out there. And again, that was a situation where he's facing two big bets mm -hmm. to call with about seven and a half big bets. 
in on the, uh, you know, in the pot. It's pre it was pretty close. A couple limpers here. And it looks like we've got four-way action. So here we go, four small bets. Here we go to the flop. Seven, six, three. Douglas has two pair. Douglas has two pair. Carlos has top pair. Douglas is going to bet. Let's see how Carlos plays it. <clears throat> He's going to raise. Cole's out of there. Rich has jack six. He's not going to call. No. And Douglas looks like he's going to three bet. And Carlos is going to call. So again, Douglas, he's three bet here. The turn is an eight. Now Carlos picks up an open-ended straight draw, so now he's not going anywhere. No, but the issue now is, let's calls. say a high blank card comes. This guy showed a lot of strength. Would you call the river? Oh, the river's a nine. Carlos has made two pair. And it gets checked to him, and he puts in a value bet here. And he's got two pair. My question was, if a king come on the river there and he bets in again, you don't call a 7-9 there, do you? Or even if a deuce came. We I haven't seen Douglas um, have a lot of, shown a lot of strength when he hasn't had it. It's been pretty predictable. No, I mean, there. he's played a lot of hands, but usually calling when he's betting, he usually has something. Right. Live at the bike, Monday through Friday. Six to nine Pacific time. And of course, now we replay this show mm -hmm. right after the show, through the night, into the next day, until 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So if you miss one night show, you can always watch it. Or you can also sign up for the archives, which will get you access to all the old shows. Just because you can watch the shows now the next day doesn't mean you haven't missed out on a lot of stuff that we've had in the previous nine months. Greg Raymer, Barry Greenstein, right. Kathy Liebert. Right, limp, limp here. Three-way action. Here we go to the flop. Jack, 6-4. Douglas checks. He's got a flush draw. Carlos is going to bet out on top pair here. Richard limped in there with 9-10. He opened limped on the button he limped? there, surely. Yeah, open limp on the button. Yeah. Both players call. Turns a diamond, and now Douglas has the flush. And then he called on it. And now he's going to bet it. He bets right into Carlos. Yeah, I don't know. Why would Rich call the flop? Card? I'm trying to figure that out, and then I do, do a double take to make sure we have his camera, his cards up right, and we do. Carlos shows the jack, folds. Rich folds. Douglas takes it down there with a flush. Maybe he was going to represent diamonds, but then when Douglas did, he knew he couldn't. He knew he had them. Maybe. I don't know. I don't it's hard know. to represent anything in this game, though. In a limit game. Get called. Yeah. yeah. We've got a new dealer I coming into know. the box. And a new player. His name is Eric. What's Eric. his? What's he? Seat number three. Seat number three. Oh, yeah, our Canadian friend left us. You had to catch Eric. a flight. Yes. And you're taking your blind? Oh, okay. Very good. 400. So, Eric, seat three. They've had quite a few amount of friends show that come out to L.A. for a poker vacations. Mm -hmm. These guys actually hit up every casino in this area I over the last you, uh, couple days. And i got to tell you, they went, they went to one today, and I was like, skip it. And I think you might be thinking about the same one that they, they might have went to. They went to one of the casinos? Yeah, one over in Inglewood. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually thinking about the one off the of 91 because oh. <laughs> that one's just like... Does anybody go there anymore? I was driving. Actually, Rich was driving with me. And uh, he's like, oh, what about that casino? Eh, <laughs> get that one. We get a raise and a three bet. Looks like Rich three bet in seat nine with pocket fives. And look at Carlos. He's trying to figure out See, if he's going to play. See, obviously, I don't teach him how to play poker. Carlos mocked 
three bets with ace queen in the small blind. Ace mm -hmm. queen offsuit to Rich's three bet. And again, you know, Rich has played tight the whole time. Yes, he has. And Carlos paid attention, but the other But look at this. Don't. Douglas calls with 6-7 offsuit on the button. Queen 4-9. Rich bets. And Blake's going to call with second pair. Turns a deuce. Rich is going to bet again. Blake is going to call again. And the river's a three. Let's see if Rich shuts down here. King nine is good. And uh, Carlos would have mucked the best hand there. Or he yes. did muck the best hand. He mucked the best hand. Again, ace queen off suit, out of position in the small blind mm -hmm. against a three bet from the tightest player on the table. That's not outrageous to fold that. Oh, no, not at all. No. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what Carlos is saying. I was giving him credit. He hadn't played any hands. <laughs> See, six says that there was dust on those chips. Well, obviously, you have to, you know, pay attention to the players you're playing against. Well, yeah, and some of the players actually did. Some of the players were like, I wasn't, wouldn't have called. <laughs> C8 has raised here with ace five of clubs. And look at that, we're not gonna see a flop. Takes it down. Again, we got about I don't know, ten or fifteen minutes left in the show. <laughs> I was saying that David's going to be doing Poker Blue Whale Night tomorrow, Shirley. Yes. Give me a nice night off from those guys. Well, keep your fingers crossed yeah, that I don't wake up in the morning. Yeah, because you're going to end up being sick, and I'm going to have well, to come in. We'll see how my voice is in the morning. Gave this one Actually, a go today. Actually, I was thinking about playing the 200 with three bites. We have that tomorrow. I'll uh, so hold them at that. They're like, oh, okay, I'll take advantage of that. Well, hopefully, I'll be good to go. We'll see. Limp, limp, limp here. Five-way action. Unraised pot. Here we go to the flop. Queen, five, eight. Set of fives over there for Blake in seat eight. And he bets. Now, Rich is going to call. He's open-ended with six, seven. And Stan calls with bottom pair. Wow. Turns a nine. There's the jackpot card for Rich. Blake is going to bet. And let's see if... Rich raises. I would imagine so, right? There we go. Well, he just called. He just called. Yuck. Well, maybe he's waiting. Well, maybe he's I mean, trying he to... And look at this. Blake bets Ooh. blind. Now that that's where it's going to get him in trouble. Yep. River's a deuce. And well, I'm, he would have bet anyway. I imagine that Rich is going to raise here, right? Yes. He raises. And Blake showed no respect earlier and won the hand, so this time he's thinking, hi, I got you. Rich has got the straight. <laughs> yep. Finally, Blake with the, uh, the blind bet gets burned. But like you said, he was going to bet the river anyway. <laughs> Rich takes foul. First pot he's won, right? <laughs> yes. Buttons move over here to seat four. We haven't seen Nicole play that much. On the button. Seat one's got a king queen off suit. He's going to limp in. Carlos folds. Call over there in the cutoff of Jack 10 suited. C5 is in the hand. Five players. We've got five-way action here. Going to the flop. Unraised pot. All clubs. Ace-10-3. There's only one player with a club. It's Brian. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Blake has an ace, though, in seat 8 But actually, Blake is not in the hand. So it gets checked over to Eric. And Eric bets with second pair. Why not? Mm -hmm. In late position. And we know Look Douglas at Stan. Call. Stan calls with a gut shot wheel draw with no clubs. And Douglas is in there with king queen with no clubs. 
Nice check. And the river is an eight, and, and the pair of tens is still good. I got to tell you, I got to be honest with you. Um, Stan was all in. If we can keep that board, well, Stan was all in there. He was all in mm -hmm. on the flop. Now, there was a side pot there between Eric and uh, seat number nine, who had king queen, a red king queen. Right. If you're on the side there, how on do you nine. not? How do you not? The seat one. How do you right. not bet on the side there with Jack ten? When the turn comes an ace, mm -hmm. he checks to you. Right. I would think that you wouldn't want to let a small club come out right. there. Right. Well, we, especially because we know seat one is going to fire out if he has anything. So, you know, if he's check calling. Yeah. I think you definitely want to bet on the side there with Jack 10 if you think you have the best hand. But he chose to check it. King Queen suited here for seat three. Going to limp. Actually, that's queen 10. Nicole's got the king queen, and she raises. And seat seven calls. Three-way action. Here we go. Seven, five, three. Flop hasn't hit anybody. Nicole bets. Nicole's got both players dominated, and both players fold. King comes, she's good. Queen comes, she's good. She takes it down. Now, Nicole is a lower level prop, too, so she plays a lot mm -hmm. of 6-12 and 8-16. She's right? actually kind of very similar to me in that that's our title, but anytime we can get in the no-limit games, that's where we're going. So, you know, she plays the 500 no-limit, the unrestricted bond. She does. She'll play the 3-5 to five and any no-limit game she can get into. So usually the way it works here is that you guys on the green chip level can just make your way up to no limit if they don't need you, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for some strange reason, we have a lot more leeway than you guys. Yeah. I mean, they're really on your, on you guys and make sure. Um, yeah, if we can help out with a no limit, then it's all good. Stan is going to raise here. He's got ace, queen, and diamonds. And Brian's going to call with Queen 10 off suit. Actually, excuse me, three bets. Blake calls, King Jack off suit. Now that's a hand, I don't know what you're really looking to hit there on the big blind. Three with bets back, King Jack off suit. With King Jack, yeah. yeah I don't like that. Brian's I, played it pretty tight. He, he, th he and re And three betting, I don't think it's that bad, yeah. Yeah, but. he re-raised in the small blind. I think King Jack would have gone to muck for me. And Brian's actually all in, so that's why he raised with Queen 10. Mm -hmm. Eight, nine deuce here. And it gets checked around. Turns a four. Brian is all in with queen ten. And now Blake bets into a dry side pot with overcards. Douglas calls. Stan calls. Again, this might be one of these situations where you really wouldn't want to bet with King Jack here. And the river is an ace. And Stan has the best hand. I mean, Blake is trying to bet into the board. But even if everyone folded, the way that Brian played the hand, you've got to think that Brian has a better hand. Mm -hmm. Well, except for the fact that he's pulling money out of his wallet. <laughs> An ace-queen is good here. Yeah, Stan looks like everybody's grandfather. Yes, he does. you still have your grandparents? Uh, my father's grandfather passed away a couple of years ago. That was the last one. Yeah. But I my, knew them that, all. That's the I same, knew all same. My them. grandma, my last one surviving, yeah. um, she died about almost two years ago. About, or about two years ago. This is actually going to be the last hand of the night. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We've got a raise here. Ace 10 off suit is going to bring it in. Ryan's going to call with ace five of diamonds. Three We've got three-way action. Ryan, the initial raiser. King seven, deuce. It's going to get checked to Ryan, he bets. Probably going to take it down here. 
So Ryan, ch Ryan chose not to bet. He was a preflop raiser, but Brian did bet. Yes. And he took, he it, took down. it down. Well, that is going to do it for us tonight. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Hopefully, stick around tomorrow for the uh, Poker Blue Whale Night. Hopefully, I'll be if here. If you can handle if it. If I wake yeah. up and my voice is still intact. For uh, everyone here in the booth, we hope you enjoyed uh, Limit Hold'em. Uh, I'm Bart Hansen, and for Shirley Rosario, good night, everybody, from Live at the Bike. It's here. It's big. And it's closer than you think. It's... It's here. It's big. And it's closer than you think. It's not a tournament. It's what you don't see on TV. The cash is real. The stakes are high. They bet big. They win big. They lose big. High stakes live action poker. Live at the bike. Watch it live on the web. Or play it if you dare. At the Bicycle Casino right here in Los Angeles.